everybody up and ready? Mm-hmm. Okay, we'll see. Take it slow and easy. And I don't have a gap. Okay, we'll go. This meeting is called to order at 6.01 p.m. The Pledge of Allegiance will be led by B. Spelker. Please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, B. This is our first time doing uh, agenda online, so we're learning as we go, so please bear with us. Uh, can I have roll call, please? Yes. Governing Board Member Gomez? Here. Governing Board Member DeLeon? Present. Governing Board Member Garcia? Here. Governing Board Member Guarenta? Here. And Governing Board Member Hansen? Here. I need a motion to approve the agenda for tonight's meeting. Uh, Madam President, before yes. you approve it, we do have a correction to the agenda 7.10. The correct recommendation is approve and authorize payment for attorney fees and settlement agreement for a student with an individualized education program. That's 7.10. Okay, thank you. I'll take a motion. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, who moved? I did. Okay, do I need to report that out, or are you going to report it? Tell um, me how this works now. So, uh, Governing Board Member Garcia motion. Okay. And a second? I'll second. And Yesenia seconded. And I'll take a vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried, 5-0. Oh, we needed to, I'm sorry. Uh, we need, that's right. We, need, we needed to, board members needed to take a vote on this. Okay, so where is that on, oh, on, oh I'm so sorry, the agenda. Here we go. I I'm sorry. Okay. Okay, everyone voted? Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Where do we vote it? A little window pops up like that. Standard I'm still lost on here. Hers is not showing up. You may have to go home and join the meeting. I have to go back home? Or right here. Go back to the meeting. Right, and Meetings. then view the agenda. Oh, wait. It's wait, not I was. for you. Huh? It's not. It hasn't gone. Yeah, I'm on there. What is, what is it? Like, um, to vote. So I don't see that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it'll say join the meeting. You should say to join the meeting. Did you log in? Did you log in? Probably because you were logged in. Have patience, we're learning. Technology. Okay. Okay. Um, board member DeLeon, did you? Yes. No. It's not showing? Not showing. I think it's a glitch because I know we have that little bubble to make notes and they're all gone. Okay. <laughs> For mine, so. so I'll try we... logging out and then logging back in. Okay. So what we can do is I can take your verbal vote and I'll document it here so we can move along on the agenda if that's okay. Okay. 
That will work, everybody? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, Board Member Garcia, your vote? Yes. And Board Member De Leon? Yes. Okay. And I'm closing the voting. Okay. And you'll read the results? Yes. And that was a 5 0 vote for approval. Okay. Thank you. Okay, now we'll take a motion to approve the minutes from the last meeting. I make a motion to approve the minutes for the last meeting. I'll take a second. I'll second. Okay, all those in favor? Oh. Aye. 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 We're not voting online anymore. Online. Yes. So. Okay, mine came up. There we go. Board member to lay on your vote. It didn't show up? No. It populated here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to take time. Uh, yes. Okay. And board member Garcia. Yes. Okay. And I'll be closing the vote. And that's a 5 0 vote for approval of the minutes. Thank you. Okay, now we'll have the student reps. And from Paramount High School, we have um, Janela Jimenez. Is that correct? This changed. Jaime Lopez. Paramount High School. You're Jaime. Yes. They gave me a wrong note. You're Jaime. Thanks. <laughs> Good evening, President Hansen, board members, superintendent, Dr. Perez, executive cabinet, and audience. We have, been, we have been busy with the start of a new semester. Over 200 students have been taking the LPAC test over the past two weeks. They have been working hard and putting their best foot forward. Way to go, Pirates. Last week was National Counseling Week, where we were able to express our gratitude and appreciation to our counselors for their hard work and efforts on behalf of the students, parents, and faculty. On Friday, February 7th, our pirates participated in registration rush. ASB set up informational tables where students asked questions about classes for next year from CTE pathways, AP classes, and, and VAPO. Teachers and fellow pirates answer the questions through handouts, poster boards, and interactive QR codes. I wanted to give you an update on CIF playoffs on our winter teams. Tomorrow, February 12th, five of our varsity football players, Terrell Taylor, West Point, and Willie Cleveland, DeJuan Freeman, Kingston Halla, Ahmad Parker, Arizona Christian. Christian University will sign in front of their families and faculty tomorrow at 12.15 p.m. in the main gym. On our girls' water polo team plays Ontario High School. The location of the game is at Warren High School at 3.30 p.m. Our boys' soccer team hosts Aliso Miguel High School. The game starts at 3 p.m. We are our way for girls basketball at Bishop Con Our Lady of Loreto High School. The game begins at 7 p.m. On Friday, February 14th, 13 members of our boys wrestling team qualified for CIF individuals and they will face their opponents at Brea High School. Our cheer and song are competing in nationals at the Anaheim Convention Center. Competition scheduled will be finalized on Wednesday. We would like to wish our spring sports good luck as they prepare for their new season. We hope to see you at our upcoming sporting event. Go Pirates! Thank you for allowing me to share the activities and events at Senior Campus. Have a wonderful evening. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. And from Paramount High West Campus, Morgan Clay. Good evening, Board President Hansen, Board Members, Superintendent Dr. Perez, Executive Cabinet, and Audience. My name is Marlene Ramos, ASB Student Body President, and I represent Paramount High School West Campus. It has been a busy few weeks for the freshmen of West Campus. 
Second semester is in full swing and we survived our first finals week. Last week, all of our biology classes engaged in a hands-on DNA extraction. Students were able to see multiple strands of DNA by extracting them from fruit. It was so meaningful to be able to see real DNA and compare it to the models we had been learning about. The senior campus link crew members taught lessons to all freshmen about making choices. They presented information about being impulsive and getting us to think about options when making decisions. The leaders stayed for lunch and mingled with their freshman groups from summer orientation. On the subject of orientation, February 27th will be our future pirate night, where students and parents can visit our campus to learn about everything West Campus has to offer. We are hoping for a great turnout so we can show off our school. With Valentine's Day right around the corner, ASB has been selling candy grams and fresh red roses. Students can buy these items for their sweetie or bestie or even for themselves. ASB also gave out free hot cocoa during the cold weather last week and had a pin the arrow on Cupid activity at lunch. Thank you for your time and hope everyone has a lovely Valentine's Day. Thank you. And from Buena Vista, Christopher Carrillo. It's, you're not Christopher. This is, this, is, this is a mess. I'm so sorry. I'm really sorry. What's your name? Uh, Mariana. Thank you. Good evening, President Hansen, board members, and Superintendent Dr. Perez. Thank you for this opportunity to represent Buena Vista High School tonight. On Thursday, January 30, we held our Student of the Quarter Awards Luncheon, where teachers and parents got an opportunity to celebrate the success of their students. It was a positive way and motivating way to start the third quarter at Buena Vista. Also, in January, Buena Vista staff and students came together to show our love and support for fellow Eagle Alejandro Medina, also known as Alex. In December, Alex was diagnosed with a rare type of bone cancer and is currently assigned to home teaching while undergoing treatment for the disease. As a school community, we raised money to purchase winter formal tickets for Alex, created a video to encourage him, made tons of cards, and took a school-wide photo to send to Alex to show our support. Paramount Furniture also donated a special recliner for Alex, and for that, we are very appreciative. We will continue to keep Alex in our thoughts and find creative ways to show our support. Lastly, Paramount Rotary and Vision to Learn were on campus last Tuesday to provide free glasses to 81 Bonavista students. Thanks to these two organizations, many of our students are not able to see more clearly and learn better. Our students are wearing their glasses daily and deeply grateful to Paramount Rotary and Vision to Learn. Thank you for your attention and may you all have a pleasant evening. Thank you. And from Odyssey STEM Academy, Andre, did I get that one right? Thanks. <laughs> Good evening, Board President Hansen, members of the board, Superintendent Dr. Perez, I hope I said that right. Yes, you're fine. Executive Cabinet and Community, my name is Andres Salcedo, and today is a special day because I brought fellow freshmen today for a board presentation. First off, I want to start by telling you all about the internship process. Each freshman is developing a project that is of interest to them and is helpful to the organization where they serve. We've already begun the process of creating our own projects. Mine happens to be a bilingual brochure for a pet hotel known as Joyful Paws. The students are taking the work that they have put in for the internship project very seriously and are doing a great job in doing so. Sadly, we are about halfway through our internships and we will leave them sooner than expected. Now then, on to the idea lab. We are currently working on cyborg projects of human enhancements. Our unit on human enhancements focuses on using technology to help humans do things they otherwise couldn't do. An example of this would be to add a sixth sense to the body, maybe such as being able to sense how many people are in a room. Learning in this way wouldn't be possible without the help of our partner, NewView. And that's why my friends are here today. They are here to tell you about their experience in the Idea Lab this year. Now then, wait, huh? We thought that it would be important to first tell you about ourselves and our interests. That way you can understand who we are and why we learn the way we do. So I'll take a moment to tell you a little bit about myself. <laughs> I have lots of interests. I am most interested in playing instruments, singing, and cooking. The fact that I can make something through music to make people like what they hear is motivating. I've always enjoyed positive feedback, whether I'm playing an instrument, singing, cooking, or presenting at a board meeting. <laughs> 
Hearing all the compliments makes the learning and practicing worth it. Some of my natural strengths are public speaking, relating to others, and making things with my hands. When I think about my future, I like to imagine that I can enjoy my job in life. I hope you enjoyed learning about the power of our ideas during our presentation later this evening. Thank you. <laughs> and from Paramount Adult School, and I know this is Carlos. <laughs> Good evening, President Hanson, members of the board, and Superintendent Dr. Perez, Executive Cabinet, and guests. Thank you again for the opportunity to share all the wonderful activities occurring on our campus. First, at the adult school, congratulations to all the, our students of the month, recipients for the month of January. And in addition, we are proud to announce that we have a six new USA citizens from the citizenship class. Laura Landeros, <coughs> Villegas, Silvia Caballeros, Esther Becerra, Chon Tsun, Irma Flores, and Consuelo Avena. They all passed the citizenship test and the interview, and sounds they will be sworn in by a judge. We also have presentation about the dangers of wiping by the Adventist Health Glendale Foundations. The presentation provides valuable information to the adult students and what to look for the for with their children and family members if they vibe. Finally, Hub Series representative from One American's Job Center of the California Visitors the campus and met with the students during the morning and the evening. The classes offering job trainings and job opportunities. The half citizen representative returned the next very day to help students apply for jobs and training. Next, the Paramount Adults Transaction students continue to stay busy as well. Ms. Alfaro's class visited the Fullerton Arboretum and enjoyed walking through the Triangle Garden collections. They were able to learn about plants, natives of California, and from around the world. Mr. Alonso's class went to the Norwal Bowling Alley with the adaptive PE teacher. The teacher demonstrated and showed the students how to bowl. The students had a blessed bowling. Mr. Butler class visited the Cabrillo Marine Aquarium. The students took a tour of the aquarium and enjoyed touching the fish in the tide pools touching tanks. Lastly, Mr. Preciado's class participated in herpes fights events in Downey. The past students participated with the students from four other school districts and enjoyed singing karaoke together. Finally, congratulations to the community. They school students who participated in the ABC luncheons for the fall semester of the school year. The students Earned letters, graded of A, B, or C <coughs> in their course. Next, a new goals for the life group began this spring semester with a new set of students receiving valuable guidance and mentoring from their group leaders. As you can see, there are many wonderful things happening at the Paramount Adult School. Pat and CDS, thank you, you. Everyone, and have a wonderful evening. Thank you, Carlos. Okay, we are down to um, employee, um, employee representative reports. Anyone from TAP? Kim, are you here? Nothing, t nothing tonight. Anyone from CSEA to speak? Nothing tonight. Okay, thank you. Okay, um, this is the hearing section and we do have a, um, an environmental report. So the three speakers, I have Jose, De Leon, Monica, and uh, Gerald. If you would like to speak uh, after the environmental report, please let me know and then we can hold that until after, the three of you. Right now? Okay. 
Uh, okay, the first one is Jose De Leon. Okay, I need to read this for the record. Persons wishing to address the board should fill out a blue card located on the table by the door and submit the card to the secretary. Speakers will be called in sequence during the hearing section, which is limited to one hour, and each speaker to one, to one presentation of three minutes. The board cannot engage in public discussion during this portion of the agenda. That's according to Government Code Sections 54950 through 54963. Staff will follow up and address public inquiries if contact information is provided. Those who have a group concern are encouraged to select a spokesperson to address the board. Persons wishing to address the board on a specific agenda item at the time the item is under discussion are limited to three minutes each and will be called to speak following the staff comments and prior to the board's discussion and taking action. Thank you for listening. Mr. De Leon. Hello, good evening uh, to all of you. Uh, I'm here uh, to talk about the air. Uh, for some reason, AQND uh, in the last few year, years uh, they have a determination uh, for our city, our city Paramount, uh, to have a one nanogram read, reading as a, a normal tolerance. And uh, I, I want to clarify about AQMD. It's a, AQMD is El Distrito del Control de Calidad del Aire en Paramount. Uh, por si algunos no, no están familiarizados con ese término. Um, when we first started to complain about this metal smell, we didn't know that what were what we were were we breathing at that time. And they found out that it was chromium six. Uh, still, you know, it got better at least here in Lincoln School. Uh, we don't smell anymore. I work across the street, uh, and uh, it doesn't mean. Our kids in, at Lincoln are safe. Uh, for example, just fe on February 3rd, in February 3, el monitor número 2, que está a menos de 200 metros de acá, uh, la lectura fue de 3.66. Yes, monitor number 2 which is about 200 meters away from here, from Lincoln School, it shows 3.66. Uh, monitor 19, it went up to uh, 5.19. El monitor número 19 marcó 5.19. Ese monitor está justamente pegado a Gaines. It's really close to Gaines School. And we know that we have uh, preschool uh, kids that are, are breeding those contaminants. Uh, my question is, why are we taking too long to get uh, air filters for our classrooms uh, to replace the regular filter for the air condition system, which we've been asking for uh, uh, EPA filters number uh, 16. Uh, I don't know how, how long do we have to wait. Nuestros niños podrán esperar más tiempo? ¿Creen ustedes que nuestros niños puedan esperar más tiempo? Cuando sus órganos están en pleno desarrollo y ellos están inhalando esos contaminantes. Yeah, Mr. De Leon, your time has expired. The time Thank you. Didn't go off. Thank you. A glitch again. So sorry. We'll figure this out. Okay. The next person is Monica.
Welcome. Ah, oh, thank you. Sí, me va. Sí, muchas gracias. Uh, buenas tardes, señores del board meeting, doctora Ruth Pérez, superintendente, presidenta Vivia Hansen, miembros y, y, y audiencia. Good evening, board members. Dr. Ruth Pérez, superintendent, um, president Vivian Hansen, and members of our, uh, our board members and audience. Me dirijo a ustedes con respeto y agradecimiento por la, la oportunidad de poder expresar las preocupaciones que como padres de niños con educación especial nos pone a pensar qué está haciendo el distrito por nuestros niños para que los servicios que se les ofrecen sean los adecuados para que ellos logren un progreso. It is with respect and um, gratefulness that I um, express uh, this opportunity um, that I um, um, give, express to you for this opportunity and um, uh, regarding my concerns as a parent with uh, um, kids with special needs. Um, I am, I've been wondering what exactly is the district um, doing for our kids uh, that, we, that need these services, the services that are being um, offered to them uh, in regard to see to if they are adequate or not so that they can progress. Muchos de nuestros hijos aún están en una edad de aprendizaje. No son verbales y dependen de un dispositivo IPA acondicionado con un app apropiada según sus necesidades para poder comunicarse. Si la intervención no es la más adecuada, nos encontramos con niños en edades escolares avanzadas que ni siquiera se les está capacitando para poder comunicarse. No se les está dando importancia, la importancia que puede tener AXC como herramienta de apoyo para la terapia del habla. A lot of our students at this um, moment are in, um, at an age level where, where they're learning. Um, a lot of them are not verbal and they depend on a device, an iPad, that uh, has a, an application um, to assist our kids um, in their um, communica communication. Um, a lot of these students with uh, conditions that are um, severe, that are um, um, advanced or, or chronic, um, are not being um, trained. They're not being um, capable of, of communicating. Um, I don't think uh, the importance um, and the support that parents need uh, in regard to this um, device Um, I don't think it's being um, given the importance that should be um, given as a, as a way of uh, communication uh, for our kids with needs. No quiero hacer comparaciones, pero sabemos que este servicio de tecnología asistiva, conocida por sus siglas AXC, anteriormente era, pro, era proveída por LA County y nunca tuvimos ningún inconveniente con el servicio porque a los padres se nos estaba educando. Siempre estaban dispuestos a comunicarse con nosotros, a escuchar nuestras inquietudes y reportarnos el progreso de nuestros hijos. Nunca se nos notificó el cambio del servicio y ahora el distrito es el encargado de proveer el servicio de AXI o tecnología asistiva. Es un servicio y no, y, y si es un servicio deben de establecerse metas. No hay metas, no hay entrenamiento para los padres. Y muchos desconocen cómo funciona el A del IPA y cómo pueden ayudar a sus hijos. No hay ningún tipo de comunicación con los padres. No nos podemos dar cuenta del progreso que están teniendo nuestros hijos. Y por ende, en muchos de los casos, los padres no tenemos el conocimiento para saber si el app que se les está ofreciendo es la más adecuada para que logren un progreso. Quiero enfatizar que nuestros hijos dependen del dispositivo para expresar lo que quieren o sienten. Es la forma como ellos pueden expresarse, es su voz. No es justo que esto esté pasando con nuestros niños. No se les está dando el servicio apropiadamente. Y por último, queremos preguntar 
Excuse me, can you let her translate some of that? That's a long, that's a it lot is, for her to translate at one time. time. Thank you. Oh, Sorry. she parent is running out of time, and that was the reason uh -huh. why she uh, mm -hmm. did not pause. And I will, I'm familiar with the device, the AAC technology device that parent is referring to, so I will gladly um, be brief um, if it's okay with, uh, with her continuing. And she's done. She's done. Uh -huh. She's like three, four That's all right. Time. It's all right. Okay. Por último, queremos preguntar cómo responde el distrito cuando irresponsablemente a nuestros niños no se les está dando el servicio de AAC. No hay una continuidad. ¿Qué pasa con este tiempo perdido? ¿Y cómo se va a asegurar el distrito que los padres reciban los entrenamientos necesarios para que los niños puedan comunicarse sin frustración? Porque son niños no verbales. Gracias. Thank Buenas you. noches. Um, sí, yeah, yeah. You want to translate that last part? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Can you translate the last part? Yes, I gladly will. Um, parent is basically, I. this is the first time I've heard that this AAC device, technology device that, parent, that students that are not verbal use, um, that it was a service that was uh, offered through LA, LA, LACO. LACO. And uh, now it's the training, the service, the device, everything. It seems like it's now uh, a PUS, uh, uh, Paramount's uh, um, liability, if I, want, if I can use that word. And uh, parent feels that the training and that parents uh, should be receiving um, with, so that they can also assist uh, their kids at home. Um, it's not there, and uh, and for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mom wants to end um, this uh, concern with uh, wanting to know what can the district do um, to. Um, assist our kids with this need uh, because they are um, nonverbal and this, this is their voice and the, the time that has not been uh, of this service, the, the service that has not been rendered to them, what can be done with that? Okay. Thank, thank you for bringing <laughs> okay. that to our thank attention. You. Thank you. And the next speaker is Gerald Serta. Good evening, board, uh, superintendent, and audience. I would like to ask a question. How many classes, how many classrooms are being utilized for student instruction at this time? I know there's 19 campuses. I would like to know the, uh, the classes that are being utilized. How many are set up for MERV 8 filters? How many have MERV 10 filters? And how many have six, uh, MERV 16 filters? I would like a response on that as well. We had requested indoor testing years ago and district uh, District, uh, well, we had requested indoor testing when Los Angeles County Department of Public Health had offered, but the district d decided to spend money on contracting an outside and consultant. I am talking about previous board members. Providing a safe learning environment along with top-notch education should not be taken lightly. The schools scheduled for indoor testing should also be with Los Angeles uh, County Department of Public Health all the time, not just on selective uh, dates that have asterisks on your, on your PowerPoint. That kind of gives the impression that you're going to go in there, clean up before LA Department of Public Health goes in to provide a neutral testing. I'm sorry, what? Uh, indoor testing should not only be for Hexfil and chromium. Companies in Paramount emit other toxins, not just the carcinogens, uh, our, uh, CRs, uh, CR6. And I thank the student who mentioned the classmate dealing with cancer. Cancer in the city of Paramount is becoming like the flu, where everybody at some point may get it. Now, if you go back to the readings in 2017, you know, like the uh, previous speaker mentioned, to have readings that are above the one nanogram, which is the limit from AQMD, uh, these companies are in business for production and money. 
You know, we need people to advocate, the school board members, the superintendent, the parents, the community, everybody here should be advocating for our kids, not just people, a, a few handful of folks. I mean, you go, you go back these three years and you see all the readings, one point something, two point something, three point something, four point something, five point something. This is business. These companies are in business here. And it's the same thing. Come to the board here and we should have changes. You go to the city council member and you should have changes. And when you have a, and I'm gonna say it, when you have a, a power couple that's president here and a mayor in our city and does very minimum, what does that tell you? Exactly, it tells, it tells you they're not here for us. And we had an election two years ago where that's why we have small progress. We have LA County Department of Public Health coming in, we have small progress, baby steps, but we have some changes. Now we had three members that were elected by this community, okay? And now one decided to jump ship and cater to the previous two board members. You know, that's an embarrassing for us. Thank you. Okay, oh, excuse me, our next speaker is Adrian Alvarez. Buenas noches, padres, uh, good evening, parents, and I'm so happy to see parents here with their children so they can get a true education experience in true civic and democratic participation. This is what everything you learn in school is for, to speak truth to power, like Martin Luther King and Malcolm X did as we celebrate Black History Month. Um, I'm going to do my own translating. I know it's going to sound mean, but the translation uh, is not very good. And it misses the points that parents are trying to say. So I'm going to say it in Spanish, then I'll translate. I want to talk about two things. One, uh, me invitaron los padres de educación especial como abogado, as an advocate, uh, a una reunión que se sostuvo aquí en el distrito uh, para que se reconociera formalmente el comité de padres de niños con necesidades especiales. So I was invited to a meeting as an advocate for special education parents here. Uh, para mi sorpresa, el, el, la administración tenía... A, Tres administradores, entre ellos estaba la directora de recursos uh, humanos. To my shock, when we entered the meeting, the administration had you know, three, three people there, and amongst them was the director of human resources. Now, what is the human resource director doing at a special education meeting designed to get full parental participation? It's just mind boggling that such a, an intimidating situation for parents is the way they were welcomed. Uh, no, no veo que tiene que ver recursos especiales que son los que juzgan el comportamiento del trabajo de los empleados del distrito con el derecho de los padres de los niños de educación especial. It just doesn't make any sense, but that's just the way things get done here, I guess. But that's some type of ethical violation, if not a straight violation of the Brown Act. Uh, so somebody please answer who ordered that? Who said that that was appropriate? The, la otra cosa que quiero decir es that there, there, hay gente que quiere intimidar a los padres para que no hablen, para que se censuren, preguntándoles que den sus domicilios, sus teléfonos. Eh, hay una diferencia entre lo que garantiza la ley y la constitución y lo que garantiza la, la póliza del distrito. The policies of the districts are not above the constitution. Parents have the right to speak their minds. Rules of decorum are a fraud, a way to intimidate parents into silence because parents want change. The gentleman that just spoke, for those that don't know, para los que no saben, el, el señor que acaba de hablar padece de cáncer. Y es una persona valiente porque a diario está organizando a los padres para que cambien. So change is coming, and qué bueno que vienen los padres. Thank to all the parents that are here, participate, because we have a situation where people, too many people, are getting sick with cancer. Thank you. Excuse me, the next speaker is Trish Belrose.
Good evening, board members and the administration and to the families and uh, teachers that are here tonight. I'm a member of this community and it pains me to see what is happening to our students. I can't believe that nobody from, the, from this body of people were at the AQMD meeting last Thursday night. The only person was Sonia De Leon. There was only one council member at that meeting. And you know what that meeting was about? Was about the air quality around Mokler and the Loop Co company that it surrounds it. <clears throat> Nobody was there, not community members. What happened to the air filter system that was granted to this school district? Nancy from IQ Air got a $400,000 grant to this body, to the students, to the teachers that work in this community every day fighting now cancer. My father died of cancer living in this community. I'm a 30 year resident of this community. Why? I expect an answer. Where did those filters go? They were supposed to be installed in December. I was at the board meetings where you get clapped and said, thank you, Nancy. Nothing. The money is sitting in a bank account right now, waiting for what? Meanwhile, we have students dying of cancer. We have teachers that have to be in that school every day with unfiltered air. Thank you, Mr. DeLeon, for giving us the readings. I appreciate that very much. It's top of mind for me, and I think it is for most of the members of this community. Apparently not for our school board, with the one exception I've noted, or anybody in the administration. My second reason for being here was I was at last month's meeting, and I saw the little dashboard was anybody else dismayed by the, the performance of our school? And apparently this is a long trend. Not a single member of the administration had any comments after that PowerPoint presentation that for all I could tell was some data analyst making the presentation. There was no explanation. We had the president of TAP prior to that say they need help because the district is forcing a lot of things on the school, apparently to no effect. Now, I don't know what's going on, but school board, please, I expect some accountability here. We're spending a ton of money. We're spending a ton of money of the state's money. We expect our students to be educated. Clearly something's not working. Where's the accountability? Why didn't any of you say anything? I expect an explanation. That's how my money's being spent. Don't you want to know when, when something isn't working? Why? That's my comment. Oh, excuse me. My voice is going. OK, we are down to board member reports. Ms. Um, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Ms. Gomez? Yes, thank you. Um, since our last meeting, I visited Odyssey High School uh, where I got to meet uh, the scholars there. Um, I met with Principal uh, Mr. Nuthall, uh, Dr. Smith, um, Mr. Scott Law, and Dr. Fransaw. Um, um, they gave me an overview of the beginning of the history of the high school, and then they took me to, cl uh, to classrooms to see all the um, the activities and um, the learning that the students are doing. Um, I was amazed. I did see this project here. It's really amazing. I'm not going to talk about it since we do have the students here to talk about them for themselves. But I also went to see the, the sustainability aspect. And I, I, I was really impressed. They do have an aqua uh, aquaphonics where they have fishes and the fishes um, when they when they um, do poop, it goes into another another uh, round water where they can plant plants above the water, which I thought was really really nice. If I had room in my house, I would do that too, but I, I don't. Um, they actually also have um, the, the 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 they have fruits, they have plants, they have um, an orchard. Um, they learn about the soils. They have a farm of, um, of worms. I got to talk to this one um, student. I um, forgot her name. I'm very sorry. But she gave me an interesting story of everything that she's learning. She takes it home. And her, her grandfather had a horse farm, which he no longer has. And he converted it into 
into a sustainability farm uh, where he grows uh, vegetables and fruits and and trees and I thought that was really amazing um, I was telling her that I don't have a big house but in my front yard I don't have a backyard I have a front yard and my husband actually made a small one for my granddaughter well the difference is my husband grew corn and my corn didn't grow well it, it doesn't grow because of the of the weather so at Odyssey it did grow because they have a um, uh, what do you call that? Where they where it's covered, and they had um, corn, and it's so interesting how these students know about the fertilizer, about the seeds, about the plants, which plants um, they can use. They bring they bring from home their banana peels, their orange peels, and they make all this fertilizer. So I was really really impressed, and I hope that other school schools within our district do take on. I know some of them have it, but I wish more would would, so that we can educate our students about the sustainability. They actually use their own product, which is the cilantro, the all the vegetables they. Use Use. They even uh, cook their own like little pizza and put everything that they've grown on the pizza. And so they take those ideas home and they just grow with it. So I I'm, I'm hoping, as I mentioned, that other schools do take part of that because I know my little three-year-old is already learning. So grandma, grandma, look at the tomato. And it just makes you feel so good that they are learning what sustainability is and how they can help our environment as well. So I really thank thank everyone for their, for their hospitality there. And I look forward to visiting more schools. Uh, as the months come. Thank you. Thank you. And I was impressed because when I asked them what they did about pest control, they used ladybugs. <laughs> yes. And they were everywhere. Absolutely. That's great. Ms. De Leon? Good evening. I would like to report out on several important meetings I attended since our last board meeting. I'm very puzzled at a few things. On April 8, 2019, IQ Air was invited to present at our board meeting about a fantastic grant opportunity that would bring clean indoor air to our students at six schools through a Port of Long Beach grant. Our board voted to give Dr. Perez authority to work with IQ Air Foundation to get these grants. Last fall, our district was awarded $352,000 from the Port of Long Beach based upon cost assessments prepared by IQ Air technicians. We have the money, but we still haven't, don't have the air filters installed. At the January 20, at the January 27, 2020 meeting, which was confusing to me because it was supposed to be an environmental meeting and key um, people that were supposed to be there weren't there. Then the meeting was called environmental ad hoc committee meeting. At this point, I'm not sure what it was called. But Mr. Futos told IQ Air executives that they would be given an opportunity to bid. It completely boggles my mind. How can we now ask IQ Air to bid on a grant they successfully helped us win? Why would we do that when everything is set to go? Are we now going to bid parts of this grant out to different vendors? Please correct me if I'm wrong. IQ Air's application included professional installment installation, filters for five years, parent staff education, and indoor outdoor air quality monitoring. We need one company to be fully responsible, transparent, and accountable for making sure these filters are working well by being properly installed and replaced in a timely manner. Our students, teachers, and parents have been waiting long enough, a long, long time. It's been years. IQ Air is an expert in this field. Their filters have been thoroughly studied by, the, by South Coast Air Quality Management District and have been proven to be highly effective in cleaning polluted air in the classrooms. IQ Air is partnered with the United Nations to help communities such as ours work towards healthier cities. We cannot afford to wait even one more day to clean air into our classrooms. We need them now. On another note, I also attended the school board's, um, school board's association board president's meeting. I like to go to meetings that are going to educate me and help me to better serve my community. 
it was very interesting to learn. Um, there are so many things I want to share with um, President, um, um, and I know President um, Board Member Hansen attended, which I was so glad. Um, and I will share an email with Dr. Perez. Needless to say, I don't want to go over and over because people sometimes, you know, they get impatient when I speak. Um, and nevertheless, um, it was interesting to learn that no board president has the legal right to limit free speech during public comment. This means that our district should not be writing rules of decorum that limit clapping in the audience while we board members allow ourselves to clap after the TAP president speaks or our students give a presentation. We must show equity and follow the law. I also attended a city-sponsored parking meeting. And in this meeting, there was a lot of things that I learned that are, have our community concerns, one of which really resonates, resonates with me being a board member. Um, more than one parent had shared their concerns that because uh, cars park on sidewalks, it, it now um, they are in danger because now they have to walk um, on the streets. So if Dr. Perez, could you please follow up um, for the safety of our students? And that's all I have for you today. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Garcia. My voice is going, I'm so sorry. Ms. Garcia. Good evening. I also uh, was invited by Dr. Smith to attend Odyssey and um, <coughs> it was amazing. These kids are awesome and they're learning so much. We had a couple of people there from the Nuvu there and explaining the work that is going on, all of the um, gardening, everything inside, the hands-on. Uh, they work in gr separate groups with like stage one, stage two, stage three. Um, I, I, it's, it's an amazing school and I wish that we could uh, get it bigger. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just, uh, I, all I can say is that it's a wonderful school. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Corenta? Uh, yes, so I had the honor of attending the Young Women's Conference at the Paramount High School. I just want to thank the administrators, the educators, and the volunteers and parents uh, for providing our young women the tools. Um, I hope it's just the beginning. Um, and then I also got to attend uh, Collins Elementary. We're working on celebrating uh, the 10 year anniversary of the garden there, uh, but most importantly, celebrating the educators who have dedicated 10, t 10 years of their time to teach our children and to be positive role models. So thank you. Thank you. I also attended a visitation at the Odyssey School. I've been attending meetings at um, Alondra School on their Safe and Civil uh, Committee meetings. I was pleased to see that they brought in all, all of the uh, classified folks at the last meeting and uh, had a conversation with them about the program. I also attended the California School Board Board President workshop, and uh, I think that's all that I've done. Okay, we are down to uh, Superintendent's report. Okay, thank you, Madam President. Sorry. Thank you, Madam President. This evening we have three items, and one uh, is the presentation by Collins School. You may have noticed last month, this month, and I believe next month we will also have work displayed by our Collins Colts and here to share with us what's happening at Collins is Principal Teresa Diaz. Good evening, Board President Hansen, Vice President Cuarenta, esteemed board members, Dr. Perez, Executive Cabinet, and family and friends of Paramount Unified School District. I am Teresa Diaz, and this is Nancy Manning, and we are the very proud principal and assistant principal of Captain Raymond Collins School. <laughs> thank you. I would like to thank you for inviting us here to tonight to share our bulletin boards with you. Before I begin our presentation, I would like to extend our deepest thanks to Vice President Cuarenta for her advocacy on behalf of our Collins School Garden. Our garden is almost 10 years old and the garden bed frames have weathered and need replacement. When Vice President Cuarenta came to Collins for a visit in October, she told me to let her know if we ever need anything. 
and so I was ready. <laughs> and I expressed our need for sponsors to help with the funding of our new frames. Vice President Cuarenta said that she would see what she could do, and I gave her a copy of our garden plans and quotes for the cost and installation. A short time later, Vice President Cuarenta connected us with Barbara Croson from the Paramount Chamber of Commerce, and we now have our generous donors, we're glad to say. Good work. Yes. Because of Vice President Cuarenta's advocacy on behalf of Collins School, Metro Plywood and Jamit Construction have graciously agreed to supply the materials and labor needed to get the job done. On behalf of the, of the students, faculty, and staff of Collins School, we would like to say thank you for working on our behalf. We, your support and generosity to Collins School and to all of the schools in Paramount Unified School District is truly appreciated. Thank you so much. Good yeah. job. <laughs> okay, now on with the bulletin boards. So I would like to introduce to you the members of our bulletin board committee who work diligently to develop our theme, collect st uh, student work samples, and create the lovely boards before you. So allow me to introduce them to you. You know my assistant principal, of course, Nancy Manny. We have some, a lot of third grade teachers with us tonight because they decided to help out, and a kindergarten teacher and one of our academic coaches. So we have Jasmine Velasco, one of our third grade teachers. <laughs> Allison Thomas, a kindergarten teacher. <laughs> Bev Wittenberry, our academic coach. And Amy Pavlovitz, another third grade teacher. We also have another third grade teacher in the audience. So hi, Michelle, there she <laughs> is, all right. <laughs> Michelle Schoonover. Okay, we also have some Collins Colts that we're going to be inviting up in a few minutes to, to help us out. So our theme tonight is based on our Collins Colts mantra. We developed our mantra at the beginning of the 2018-19 school year after our first staff meeting when we watched Rita Pearson's Every Kid, Kid Needs a Champion video on YouTube to set our theme for that school year. After seeing the video, we decided to adopt Rita Pearson's class saying, as our own Collins Colts mantra. We shared it with our students at our first Monday morning meeting assembly that year, and it took off. To say a little bit more about our Collins Colts mantra, I'm gonna pass it over to Jasmine, and then we'll step. Thank you so much. As you look around, you see our Collins mantra on each of our boards. They are, um, the staff and our students embody what it means to be a Collins Colt, and Ellie will share a little bit more about that. Our students at Collins are somebody and they will be an even better somebody when they leave. And that's because they have places to go and people to impress. Our students deserve the education they get at Collins School. Thank you. So each one of the boards before you and the one in the hallway represents a line from our, from our mantra. Mrs. Manning is going to be handing out the mantra to you right now, so board members, you'll be able to kind of follow along and executive cabinet as well. So the first board is right here, it's I am somebody. This is our kindergarten board and you can see writing samples. We asked our, each one of our grade levels to collect writing samples that address each one of the lines um, from our Collins mantra. The kindergarten wrote about what makes them unique. So I am somebody, that line, what makes you unique? Because everyone brings something special about themselves every day. The second board is our first grade board and it says, I was somebody when I came. And our first graders wrote about their family's special traditions or culture. So one thing that our kids, our kids come with family traditions and we honor that in the family culture. So we wanna honor where they came from. Our second grade board is actually at the back of the room. It's I'll be a better somebody when I leave. We have a couple of things highlighted there. We have our new Capturing Kids Hearts program that we've uh, initiated. We also have Second Step program. Um, that helps students to learn um, behavioral skills in the classroom and at school. Our second graders wrote about how they were learning to be kind, honest, and a better person. Um, the next board that you see says, I am powerful and I am strong. That is our, our third grade board. And they wrote about how they're powerful and how they're strong. And that could be academically, that could be in any way, being friends, being great friends, how they're powerful and how they're strong. Our fourth grade board says, I deserve the education that I get here. And our fourth graders wrote about their best or favorite learning experiences at Collins School. 
The board that you don't see right now is out in the hallway, and that's our fifth grade board. And it says, I have things to do, people to impress, and places to go. And our fifth graders wrote about their future goals and plans for college because they're in our AVID program at Collins School. At Collins School, we are proud of our mantra and what it means to us. The students have embraced it. At our assemblies and school events, we have our students lead everyone in the mantra. And tonight, we're proud to have some of our Collins Colts here. And I'd like, love to welcome, especially our little TK student, Journey Pablo, who's going to lead our Collins Colts mantra for you. So here she is. And, and our other Collins Colts, too, come forward. Over here, so they can. Here's Journey, and we have a couple of other Collins Colts too. So, Journey, you're going to lead us in the Collins Colts mantra. So, the way that we do it is we say our first, we say a line, and then you're going to repeat after us. So, everybody go ahead and uh, join in, okay? Are you ready? I am, I am somebody. One line at a time. I somebody. I was somebody when I came. I'd be a better somebody when I leave. I'm powerful and I'm strong. I deserve the education that I get here. I have things to do, people to impress, and places to go. I am a Collins Cole. Yes. Awesome. Thank you so much, Journey. Okay, one more time. We're going to say it the way we say it at school. Ready? I am somebody. I am somebody. I was somebody when I came. I was somebody when I came. I'll be a better somebody when I leave. I'll be a better somebody when I leave. I am powerful. I am powerful. And I am strong. And I am strong. And I deserve the education that I get here. I deserve the education that I get here. I have things to do. I have things to do. People to impress. People to impress. Impress. And places to go. And places to go. I am a Collins Colt. I am a Collins Colt. You got it. Thank you for having us here tonight. Oh, jeez. Thank you so much for coming and, and sharing your children with us. And we love your mantra. Our next presentation is from Odyssey STEM Academy, and Principal Nuthall, is he here? Didn't see him. There he is. Come forward, please. Note to self, don't follow the, the uh, Collins Colts. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we have a little technology we've got to get set up here. So give us a second to, to get to our, our presentations. So, Board President Hansen, Superintendent Perez, uh, members of the board, uh, executive cabinet, audience members, parents, and community, we are pleased to be here today to share with you our work and a partner in our work called Nuvu, a cat, Nuvu Studio. Uh, my name is Keith Nuthall, and I am the uh, proud co founder of Odyssey STEM Academy. And I have brought with me today uh, Tevin and Yazdel, Andres, and Becky. You know, we're here, to, we're here this evening to share a story of inclusion. I think one of the things I'm most proud about our school is that we have a model that involves all students. And in that, in preparing for this presentation, I was reminded of a video that Larry Rosenstock, founder of High Tech High, uh, made several years ago when he won the MacArthur Award. In the video, he talks about his time opening his school, and it really reminded me of Odyssey. 
You know, our nation's school districts are designed to, to predict young persons, young people's future lives. They use these, these predictions to enact a few basic principles. You should segregate young people into social class and perceived ability levels. You should segregate students into those who are trained to use their heads from those who are trained to use their hands. You should segregate them by those who are going to college and for those who are not. You should segregate families from the learning process and you should segregate the school from the community. What I'm here to start with tonight in our, our presentation uh, is the Team Odyssey simply ignores these principles. And we're very inclusive in the work that we do. And we've brought some scholars with us today to help us tell our story. Andres launched our presentation during this board representative, rep, uh, representative report. Thank you uh, for doing that, Andres. Great job. Uh, you'll find advisory walls in our schools. In our advisory walls shown here in the picture, um, eight feet high, you know, maybe eight feet wide, and by student name, our, our young people have identified their personality traits, their interests, their skills. And as the years go on, from freshman to sophomore and beyond, we watch these interests and traits and kind of their view of who they are transform over time. These advisory walls in our classrooms um, really tell us about their interests, their hopes and dreams, strengths and growth opportunities. These dynamic walls represent the possible lives of our scholars. I would like to introduce Yazdell and Tevin and let them share their possible lives. Yazdell? Good evening, Board President Hansen, members of board, members of the board, Superintendent Perez, and community. My name is Yazdell Rios, and I am a student from Odyssey STEM Academy. As long as I can remember, I've always been into designing buildings, houses, living spaces, as well as anything involving interior design. I always get inspired by watching episodes a real designing woman. I have remodeled my room and my living room looking for decorations to add to our furniture. So from watching that show, I then knew that I wanted to be an interior designer and maybe an architect. I'm very inspired by art. I just enjoy the overall act of drawing or painting and giving, giving it away to people that I love and admire. When I think about my future, I can picture myself being an interior designer and architect. Thank you. Hello, thank you for inviting me to tell my story. My name is Tevin Dunbar. To me, there are three tiers of human understanding. The first is what humans know, the second is what we don't know, and the third is what we don't know we don't know. The second tier fasc fascinates me the most. I want to learn things humans do not know yet. I'm compelled by the universe. I want to, know I want to learn about dark matter or confirming the string theory, but mostly about astrophysics. I'm also really interested in des designing machines that improve the lives of the middle class. I'm motivated to design machines because I can let my creativity run wild and enjoy the satisfaction of getting machines to work. My idols that inspired me are characters like Nikola Tesla and Benjamin Franklin. At my middle school, I was a very quiet person that did not collaborate with anyone during assignments, group, group assignments due to always keeping to myself. During middle school, Group projects I never spoke and when I saw my group going off track I always went out and did my own project. Also during breaks I sat down and kept on doing work even if there was other students having fun. When I needed help I never asked I just kept on working even if I was confused. At Odyssey collaboration is important. I had to start talking more dur during group assignments and now I'm actually part of the project. During each break I actually give work a rest and so, so I can talk to other scholars and gain more friends. Also, I am asking for help when, when I have a question and, or when I am confused. When I think about my future, I like to imagine I am an astrophysicist discovering certain laws of the universe. Mike Rose is a researcher and writer at UCLA. Uh, in his book, Possible Lives, Mike tells the story of workers marginalized by society 
It describes their cognitive demand, the cognitive demand required to do their job well. He eloquently tells the stories and describes the respect and dignity of their work. In Why School, Dr. Rose explores the purpose of school and comes to a simple, powerful conclusion. A good education makes us, makes, helps us make sense of the world and helps us find our way in it. Dr. Perez, I've never met Mike, although I've talked to him on the phone. I have, that, that hasn't stopped me from asking him to be part of a graduation commencement speaker or providing the open remarks at Odyssey. I've had no luck. Uh, he is from uh, UCLA, and I know that you're from USC, so I don't wear your, uh, your Trojan colors. Um, but I'd love to see him um, you know, speak to our principals uh, in the fall. Um, Mike Rose's ability to be able to talk about these possible lives and the importance of education and the importance of inclusion uh, is, is really um, heartening. And so uh, just, just a really powerful moment for, for me to get, be able to kind of get Mike Rose in there. So um, the next piece, Board, Han Board President Hansen, you've explored this data before. It's not new. Um, I'm sharing it with you because it serves a myth. Uh, educators continue to be obsessed about what to teach. And certainly that's an ingredient. But over the past two decades, content standards and then common core standards were intended to bring equity into our education system. And in some ways it has. The common core had defined uh, common instructional shifts and the result is really measured progress uh, at closing the achievement and opportunity gaps. And an accountability system dashboard that grapples with what it means to be ready for life on graduation day. Our scholars face an uncertain present in a rapidly changing future. Are they ready? Uh, and so with this, I'm gonna turn it over. Uh, oh, where to go here? I'm gonna turn it over to Becky and have you have her describe and our scholars describe that missing element. And that missing element, element to those content standards is the power of their ideas. Good evening, everyone. I think that every strong educator, we ask ourselves the same question all the time. What matters most? And we know that nothing matters more than empowering our young people to generate their own ideas and bring them to life. In her book, Deborah Meyer, The Power of Their Ideas, she describes her own passion for empowering young people in her remarkable school, Central Park East. Her work serves as a inspiring guide for our own work at Odyssey as we look to create spaces throughout our school where kids can tinker, create, get feedback, and bring their own ideas to life. And that's why we invited this morning our scholars to come and tell you about their work in the Idea Lab. So I'm going to ask. Yes, Delta, come forward. Tell us about your work, yes, Delta. During all my years of school, I have worked on many projects, presentations, essays, and models. But my experience here at Odyssey has really changed me. Back in middle, back in middle school, I was more about having fun with friends and just turning in work in time. My work in middle school wasn't failing. It just didn't show my hard work and, and full potential. When I think about my, my work from this year, it shows that I spent more time engaged in the, prog in the process. Now I take time to research background information and really explore the main ideas that we are learning. At Odyssey, I have, I have to really look closely at the progress and have more patience as I struggle through drafts. My work is more detailed and my, attitudes, my attitude is more serious. I've learned that high quality work takes time. One of my favorite creations from the Idea Lab was my Twisted Towers prototype. At first, I didn't expect myself to create such a mesmerizing building. One technique that really helped me create this building was building it one section at a time and asking questions and looking for feedback from my advisor and my peers. During the process of coming up with a base to start my building and my model, I was very serious about coming up with ideas and taking notes in every part. I got inspiration from other real life buildings that look unusual and similar to what I wanted to create. This is how I got the idea of making my tower spiral. From that simple idea, I began to draft many different kinds of twisted buildings. It was hard to make a decision and narrow down the concepts to find one final design. My first prototype, in my opinion, was not the best looking. It was very messy and you could barely tell it was even a model. From making my first model, I reflected and realized that my next design would need more precision. Then I made my second prototype, adding shape and distance between each piece. I felt amazed by what I had created and I felt I started to change in, my, in how I made my models and projects. 
my third prototype was more clean and more modern. After these three prototypes, I came up with an amazing, detailed, unusual model that came from my hard work and help from my advisors and classmates. I successfully brought my idea to life, and I'm deeply proud of myself and what I've created. Thank you. It's beautiful. Okay, now Tevin is going to walk us through his project. A powerful idea I am developing in the Idea Lab is a cyborg enhancement I am working on with my partner, Verizma. I thought, when I was making this, I thought about my mother, who is not blind and it's difficult for her because she's unable to see you when she drives at night. So I imagined being able to magnify light using, using a lens mechanism and a light sensor that detects the light and opens, the, and, opens and closes a lens. For practical reasons, I decided to make a monocle, or a single lens, because because glasses wouldn't take up the entire face, which wouldn't be practical. My, my partner w was set on making a different idea called uh, camera glasses. Although we had different ideas, we both had to make an aperture. We both had different design ideas, so, 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 so I decided to agree with my partner's approach since we both are stubborn. During designing and laser cutting the aperture, there were flaws with the mechanism and it ended up failing. But we still have time to fix it. We learned that, we learned that the pivot pins needed to be adjusted so the top and the bottom structure would move independently. I look forward to being able to look at the flaws of each of my creations and find possible solutions like this one. My partner did the drawing. <laughs> Thank you, Tevin and Yasdell. That's awesome. <laughs> I'm so proud to be a part of PUSD because when we came together to define what the most important aspects of Odyssey would be, we landed on what was most important. One of those was a student-centered experience, authentic education, and an equitable education. And we know that an equitable education means believing in everybody's infinite potential, interest-based learning, curiosity, developing creative thought, and developing character. These are the things that we believe matter most. An equitable approach to education, we know, is going to have a strong, uplifting impact here in Paramount. And it's also going to have an uplifting impact on society as a whole. Um, John Dewey, one of our favorite educators, wrote 100 years ago, more than 100 years ago. He said that school is a place where we prepare young people to change the world. And whenever possible, we should blur the lines between school and society. We should give a taste to kids what it means like to work, to interact, to solve problems. And that's how we've designed Odyssey. We want our young people to take on the world starting now so that when they leave, they can make a difference and solve our biggest problems. If you look at our instructional minutes our freshman year and you really pay attention, you're gonna notice that we're flexible and we allocate our minutes um, differently. You're going to see that the time in the idea lab is prioritized. And it's prioritized for every single kid who walks through our school, not just a few chosen ones. Because we believe that in this space, the highest levels of thinking are developed. Here's where kids are creative, where they solve problems, where they collaborate. Everyone has access to the idea lab. We offer a single pathway to every single student because we know that no matter who you are, you have the ability to ideate and create. And our instructional minutes don't stop at the school gate. We know there's so much to learn outside of school. Look at how many minutes our freshmen and sophomores have already accrued through learning alongside a mentor. Um, it's this time we prioritize learning outside the school walls um, as well as Idea Lab because we know that being able to think flexibly and solve problems will prepare our students for the real world.
So I think we've shifted time and space and thought differently in the way in which our young, our young people, um, you know, they learn and put them in situations where they're problem solving on a regular basis. Um, and so it's a different way of thinking about education and a different way of thinking about minutes and space. Our curriculum was aligned to the National Academy of Sciences and Engineering. And so when you looked at that data back there and you saw that there was a high percentage of students that made it a, meet, met A to G requirements, 98% of them, and 64% of them um, met or exceeded the, youth, the uh, PSAT, uh, College Readiness Indicator, those are two indicators that not only do we pass students at a high rate, but there's rigor in our curriculum. And so that rigor in our curriculum comes through, sure, math and humanities and science, but it also comes through our makerspace and it comes through our internships. So it's thinking about that differently. So the National Academy of Sciences, through these, through these um, grand challenges, um, they are arranged in a couple of ways. Uh, USC, for example, arranges them in four categories, the joy of life, global sustainability, public health, and, cy and cyber threat. In our freshman year, our freshman year is really about STEM and how STEM can help, um, you know, help improve that joy of life. So this picture really captures our young people grappling with how to, how to improve that joy of life in the lab. And you heard from our scholars tonight about describing the power of their ideas. Each scholar and their advisor spends at least six hours a week in this space. And our Nuvu fellow, um, with our Nuvu fellow, asking curious questions, designing uh, creative solutions, and building self-confidence. Self you know, in my uh, career, journey journey's taken me in many places, many, many places. Uh, one of them was designing uh, instructional kind of summer institutes for superintendents at the ed school. I remember leading a team of academics and K-12 educators in the Office of School Partnerships many years ago. At the same time, there was a young intern working in the office and her name was Rebecca Arias. Who could know that 20 years ago, Becky and I were together in the same office at the same time? And they came together to, to build Odyssey. Uh, today we know her as Becky Perez. Uh, so I've spent a lifetime uh, coaching teachers across the country on how to design project-based learning experiences. And I've come to the realization that there's a better way. And Odyssey takes a different approach at project-based learning. Rather than task teacher advisors with designing projects, Nuvu Studio Fellows use their extensive architectural design and technology experience to ensure high-quality learning experiences. And our classroom advisors, experts in their content area, then develop powerful learning experiences linked to the Nuvu projects. The result is access for everyone. So we don't track kids. Everyone is going through this process together and everyone is learning together. And in the end, we have high quality learning for all scholars. As a part of the Nuvu Studio, um, we have a full-time person that works in our lab, a fellow from Nuvu, that works with scholars and advisors using this architectural studio model of master and apprentice. In the Odyssey Idea Lab, there are over 70 different projects in production at any one time, 70 of them. They need one-on-one -on -one guidance from an expert. Nuvu brings in local and national experts to support scholar work. This picture shows the new, a Nuvu expert working with our scholars over a video conference from Cambridge. So when a scholar needs a particular question answered and our fellow in the lab isn't able to answer that question, they literally open their laptop, video conference with somebody in Cambridge, and get one-on-one -on -one support in the moment. That's incredible. That's unique. Uh, this picture show, or, so the school represents, um, these schools represent other Nuvu Studios. Oops, I'm sorry, next slide. These schools represent other Nuvu Studio uh, schools around the world. The thing about these is families spend upwards to $50,000 to enroll <coughs> their children because they know that a well-educated person includes creative expression. So this program is here, right in Paramount. Um, it's how it's uh, you know, in many of the high-end prep schools uh, in New England and across the world. You know, our babies compete with their babies. Why not in Paramount? Thank you. That is true. Every year we onboard a new batch of teachers, and the first book we read with them is An Ethic of Excellence by Ron Berger. In his book, Ron champions the ability for all of us to develop an internal quality meter. And that's the one that tells us if our work is on point or not. 
And this is what we develop in the Idea Lab. Our kids are constantly evaluating their own work. They're critiquing each other's process and they're improving the craftsmanship of their designs one step at a time. The Idea Lab is a perfect place to develop this mindset, this disposition where kids are asking themselves, where we're asking ourselves, how can I make this more precise, more impactful, more beautiful? When we first um, thought about Nuvu, we weren't really sure. Kind of taking a risk, but now we've had Nuvu and we've seen the results and we know that we've made the right decision. We have seen the impact on our students. And I think you'd be proud to know that a few weeks ago, a team of filmmakers came to our school. They were sent to us by Ted Dinter Smith and Sir Ken Robinson. Um, they were trying to capture our work with empowering freshmen and sophomores. In his book, um, Ted Dinter Smith, What Schools Could Be, he has a collection of work in the most innovative, inspiring schools all across the US. So we were so proud that they came out to Odyssey and capturing what like our secret sauce is, what it is that we do to help empower our kids. And the footage that they've developed is gonna be used in a keynote, as a keynote address in a national conference coming up soon. And the videos will be sliced into individual resources for schools all over the country. As they develop um, their ability to help students achieve their possible lives, their best futures. So we're happy to share with everybody and we're glad to be in the spotlight. Absolutely. Superintendent Perez, members of the board, today you learned about the New View Lab through the scholars' eyes. Learning experience in the Idea Lab ignite our curiosity and creativity and help us develop an agile mind that will prepare us for today and tomorrow's challenges. So to conclude our presentation, we, we brought some of the books that we referenced today. So we're going to expand your library, and so the scholars are going to hand out some books for you. And uh, thank you for having us. And uh, the Nubu Lab for us is a powerful opportunity for our young people. Thank you so much. And would you, would you just take a quick minute and share this project that the students worked on with the, the, at the horse? Sure. The horse? Yeah, on the horse. That was incredible. Could you just share that quickly? Yep. Let me get to the slide. So last year in our third trimester, what we did is we partnered with an equine center on Carson Avenue over in uh, Long Beach. And what that center does is it supports children with autism um, using equine strategies. So they put the children on, on horses and uh, helps them be able to get balance, helps them make the connection with, a, with an animal and what we did is we built a sensory trail. So what that meant is we built a full-scale model where when the, uh, the child with autism was on the horse, they could reach through and grab and do technic and, and, um, and feel you know, kind of uh, tactile. There was kind of things that they could smell. There were things that they could move. And so as they walk through their experience with, with an adult, they're able to reach out and kind of you know, build their, their self-confidence and, and be able to, you know, build their senses. And so it was something that we built full-scale for the community. I was quite a project. So there's about 10 full-scale models that have different things and balls. And this one happens to be a piece that the young person on the horse throws a, a, a hoop and it goes into the octopus's kind of, kind of legs. That's great. Yeah, it was really great. Great opportunity to work and partner with the community. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And parents, thank you for coming and being a part of this. Thank you, Odyssey STEM Academy, and thank you, uh, leadership there as well, for your excellent work. Our final presentation, and as Mr. Frutos makes his way to the podium, I'd like to uh, thank the board for this evening um, voting, uh, proposing to vote on uh, support for Prop 13, which, uh, and I'm sharing this because I know that there are people listening to us uh, through YouTube TV, but 
Uh, Prop 13, as you know, through the governor's office, I had a, uh, the opportunity to meet with the LA Times editorial board and the Southern uh, California news group to share with them how Prop 13 passing would actually help the Paramount Unified School District, as well as all districts uh, around the state, because it would provide $9 million billion dollars uh, for facilities and items that we need uh, in our district. So I'd like to thank the board for that and bring attention to Prop 13 and, it's a, and how voting for this in support of it would be beneficial for our schools. Also want to share with the board that our presentations on the 2020 census with our parents uh, continues. Uh, last week, uh, the PTA executive board was able to receive uh, a presentation by Alejandra Ochoa. And also, uh, the third annual Young Women's uh, Empowerment uh, Conference took place on Saturday, as Vice President Cuarenta stated. This is the third annual uh, Young Women's Empowerment uh, Conference. On a Saturday, we had about 150 young ladies, middle school and high school, attend, and it was phenomenal. And the principal is working on a Young Men's Empowerment for next year as well. And finally, I just want to advertise uh, on behalf of our Musa moms, because uh, I met with uh, Erika Eras uh, from Musa, and they are hosting a Friday night uh, Valentine's dance in support of scholarship dollars for our high school students. I sent something out to everyone, but that's happening on Friday night, a Valentine's dance, and all proceeds would go to PEP scholarships for our students. And lastly, I just want to share something with the board. Uh, our wonderful partners, Vision to Learn, was at Buena Vista, as you heard last week. I was there, and I, I had the opportunity to um, help one of our uh, young high school boys put on his new glasses. And he shared with me that he had, has not had new glasses since sixth grade. Oh. So that's how powerful this partnership is with Vision to Learn, and I just want to give a shout out to them uh, for the thousands of glasses already that they have provided for our students. So thank you, board members. Mr. Frutos. Good evening, uh, board members, uh, Superintendent Perez, colleagues, and members of the audience. Uh, tonight we're bringing you uh, uh, the latest environmental update, uh, not just to give you an update on our initiatives, but also to bring you up to date on some of the processes and information uh, that has served as background since the last update. I have with me uh, two of my colleagues, uh, our Director of Facilities, Scott Law, and right now as Acting Director of MNO, Roger Ramirez, in case we have questions, because they work very actively on all our processes, especially when it comes to air conditioning systems and air quality. The goal of tonight's presentation, it, it, we have three goals. One, to review the district's actions since the AQMD identified air quality issues in the city of Paramount. We've heard a lot about the many issues and the industry we have, and, and we're going to do some background information. Uh, district funding grants and opportunities. And then where do we go from here? Uh, and, and asking the board for some guidance and direction as next steps. As background information, we're going to quickly go through some of the events that have led us here and what the district has done. Uh, the AQMD uh, air quality assessments and testing at school sites dates back several years, and in another slide we'll actually go into detail, where they've identified pollutants in our community, and the district has not only allowed for testing, you may remember nickel in 2013 and chromium-6 in the last few years, and our district has tried to not only allow for testing, but to partner with some of these agencies to do testing, to receive information, and to urge for the best quality air that we can possibly get for our students, staff, and community. The district has done testing in partnership with the LA County Department of Public Health and joint testing, and we have a, a little video reminder of what we did in the past. Uh, the district has had meetings with staff uh, and board updates, especially at those sites where we have had either pilot programs or where we have had questions, Gaines and Mokler come to mind. Uh, we also did a, a school site visit at the El Marino Elementary School where they implemented MERV 16 filters. You may remember that was the school that's right adjacent to a freeway, and obviously they had a variety of environmental concerns at that school. 
uh, and it serves as a model of what MERV 16 can do for a school. Uh, we also have participated in AQMD air filter information meetings with their premier researcher, Dr. Paul Edori, who has done air filter and particulate research and has published, I believe in 2009, classroom air filtration information that the district used in a conference with him. Um, the air filtration implementation program included a pilot at Gaines, where the entire school was outfitted with MERV 16 filters. That process has continued, and uh, we have given updates to, to the staff and then updates to the board, including the equipment modifications, uh, in this case, sheet metal work that was down to fit the new filters, which are two inches as opposed to the traditional one inch that the district used before there. Uh, participation by our colleagues in TAP has been welcome. Whenever we have had site visits, it has been typical, and we are grateful that TAP has been present. That way, uh, different members of our school community all hear the same information at the same time. And finally, we have a district environmental ad hoc board committee that allows us to share uh, in an ad hoc format with uh, a couple of board members some of the work that's possible, what has been done, just like other district ad hoc subcommittees that we have. So details. Uh, back in 2013, the AQOMD received a variety of metallic odor complaints in our community. The district has received those too, and on more than one occasion, either Roger or Scott have walked with me when folks come in and identify those, those odors. Uh, the AQOMD began conducting an investigation uh, as to the source of the emissions including initiating a local air sampling study. Uh, at the time, high levels of nickel and hexavalent chromium were found, and it was the beginning of the district establishing a partnership with the AQMD, as the district board at the time allowed for a testing device to be implemented here in the district office. In 2016, the AQMD initiated an extensive air monitoring campaign to assess the levels of hexavalent chromium the nickel issue appeared to have been dealt at the time, but uh, Chromium 6 continued. In the industrialized sections of the city of Paramount, including monitoring equipment in schools. At the time, uh, you may remember that we brought to the board the idea of allowing that equipment to be placed in our facilities. We enabled a memorandum of understanding that we have renewed every year since. In 2017, the AQMD implemented the placement of this testing equipment in school district property and began to rotate the testing equipment to various school sites, while at the same time reviewing and releasing results of those tests in their website. Uh, this practice continues, been in place for years, and we will continue to maintain access to AQMD testing. As a matter of fact, on Friday, Mr. Law and I were there to have a brief conversation with our staff as to some next steps, and the AQMD van was right outside in the parking lot and they were changing their cartridges. So uh, we're glad that they continue this process in our facilities because we want to make sure that they continue testing the air. In December 2017, the AQMD released a report that they called the Summary of Efforts in Paramount. The report included a graph showing a decline in Chrome 6 levels in the community and providing some detail of their testing and enforcement efforts they have had a variety of meetings in their Diamond Bar facility, uh, many of which we've attended. The AQMD utilizes average information to show the monthly levels described in the chart. So while those levels were coming down, there was a new emitter that surfaced at the December meeting that I attended, and that's uh, Lubeco. And Lube Lubeco? Lubeco. Lubeco. I always say Lubeco. Lubeco, at the time, did not appear to be following all the guidelines that were uh, mandated. So in our, in our uh, estimation, it was a concern. At the February 2020 uh, meeting here in Paramount, the AQMD announced that the risk reduction plan for Lubeco was approved. And I wanted to let uh, Scott Law was there at that meeting, if you want to share a couple of comments. I think what we learned at that meeting was that uh, although they had been out of compliance for a while, and go back to 2015, that it looked very positive from the results that were being shared with all of us, that they had taken the AQMD advice and guidance and been able to reduce the admission down to an acceptable level as presented to us. One of the things that you will notice is that sometimes one of the three of us will be at the various meetings. Sometimes it's difficult for all of us to attend. 
uh, especially that night, we were actually at the same time that the Lubeco meeting was going on, we were having a, me a meeting here with our environmental partners to talk to the health department. And that's just the way things happen sometimes. But we continue to monitor because it, it appears that periodically new companies pop up in the radar and it is important to keep up with the information. Uh, district actions. Our school district has embarked in a multi-year indoor testing process to examine the indoor air quality in our classrooms. Um, it was important for, for the district and, and the direction of the board multiple times have been to us to try to partner with the health department with the AQMD, which we have done. So four waves of testing have been completed, including testing done in partnership with the LA County Department of Public, Public Health. As a reminder, in August of 2017, the district conducted testing uh, at Lincoln, Zamboni, Jackson, Mochler, and Gaines. In December of 17, Gaines and Lincoln. In September of uh, 18, Gaines and Lincoln, now in full partnership with the health department. And in August of 19, again, Gaines and Lincoln. As a reminder, the December 17 meeting in the August, we were working with the health department. We were trying to establish the partnership, but it took quite a while to get that memorandum of understanding and agreement to make sure that everything was agreeable to both entities. Uh, additionally, with the testing, you may remember that we decided to use our insurer to provide the expertise. That way the district would never be, um, be told, well, you found a, a wrong consultant or somebody that didn't know. Our liability insurance is ultimately who will protect us if something goes wrong. So we wanted to make sure they provided the best possible companies for testing. The health department appears to be in agreement with them. Their consultant, Lathan, appears to work very well with our consultant and they've been part of the waves of testing since then. And we'll continue to, to do those partnerships as they finish the current report. Uh, in the video that we're about to show, which, which we've shown before and, and we've posted in our website as every other report that we do, you see the county health department team in blue and their consultants and county staff uh, working with the dis district team, which in, in green, as you will see in the video, explaining the relationship, the locations, and the joint testing process. Uh, one of the things that's been interesting is sometimes the interpretation of their wording. When they call negative results, they try to explain that that's a good thing, even though the word negative is used. And, and in several of our studies, the ultimate outcome has been negative results, which they explain means that no significant amounts have been found on the testing that they do. Uh, and by the way, they also use independent labs uh, selected by both the health department and the district. So this is a, a video that you've seen before of the testing actually live being done. And again, green is the district team, blue is the county team. So that's Dr. Raul Sobero from the county in the, in the foreground, and the green folks are from the environment team. Blue on the back is Lathan Consulting, and right now they're doing surface testing. You can see everything is documented. Uh, both agencies produce what they call the reports of the methodology to make sure that everything is in agreement and a variety of their scientists and okay. units. This is uh, testing being done in our facilities. Again, blue is the county, green is our team. Okay. Uh, okay. Good morning. I'm going to ask the three of you to, uh, to tell us who you are. And on behalf of Paramount Unified School District, we want to thank you for doing the testing together, the, together today, the joint testing between LA County Department of Public Health and Paramount Unified School District for chromium and a variety of metals, et cetera, et cetera. So, Daniel, I'm going to start with you. You can tell us who you are. Uh, I'm Daniel Ginsburg. Um, I'm with Executive Environmental. Yes, my name is Raul Sobero. I'm with the LA County Department of Public Health, and Toxicology and Environmental Assessment Branch, and I have a doctorate in public health as well as a master's in public health. My name is Meredith Church. I'm with Layton Consulting. I'm the project manager for public health for this project, and I'm a project geologist. We also have Health Science Associates, which is a certified industrial hygienist that are overseeing the project as well. And we basically, they, at the time 
would go on to explain how they use the methodology. It gets read rather technical. This video is on our website, so if anybody wants to hear the methodology, what they do, which escapes some of our comprehension, but they talk about it, it, it has been in our website for a while. So back in 2017, to remind you, the results of the test indicated that based on the data collected at that time and all the measurements of uh, Chromium 6, the classrooms were safe to occupy and for continuous use with the air handler in operation, meaning our air conditioning units working. Uh, Chromium 6 testing at, vi at various district sites, again in August 17, uh, their results indicated that no airborne hexavalent chromium was detected inside any of the classrooms during the days of sampling. And in the study, they also include a level of, of eff effective use of the MERV 16, of the MERV 10 filters Mer Mer that yeah. we were using at the time. Remember, this is prior to us asking for the grant that will move us up to MERV 16. Every action that we have done since we started working with the AQMD and with the health department has been documented in our website. What the board directed us to do and you've continued to allow us to do is to post everything in our website. Typically when we have a draft study, we share it with the superintendent, the health department and our consultants agree on a report and it's immediately posted after the board has first right to, to see it. And I'm going to try to link us, but if it doesn't work, Oh, well, uh, no, it did not work. Uh, anyway, so the front page, the front page of the website is right there, and, and anybody can see it at any time, and copies of all our reports are linked as a click, and they're all PDFs. Uh, another district action is that we had an informational meeting to present the testing at Gaines and Lincoln for the community on April 25th, 2019 at Jackson Middle School. Uh, you may remember that that was a board meeting we had in the evening. The consultants came. They explained their methodology and their results. And the reason why we did it that way is we wanted everyone to hear the results from the county and from the county health department and our consultants at the same time. The HVAC filter and retrofit project, at the time when we were getting these results, questions began to come up about the effectiveness of MERV-16 filters versus MERV-10, which the district had been using for Chromium-6. So in December 2018, the district met with Dr. Polidori from the AQMD, who provided information on his research on MERV-16 filtration and particulates, which is a study that deals with classroom filtration. And he lists a variety of particles such as butane, benzene, ethanol, the study link is included there for anybody to see it, and it is something that we, we learned a lot from our discussion with him about the possibility of air filtration in classrooms. So that moved us to the pilot at the GAINS project update. The retrofitted GAINS, which was the first school that we moved completely to MERV 16, was completed on March of 2019. The sheet metal work finish had a value of about 19,100. The supply and installation of MERV 16 filter 7,000, and the duct work and energy management monitor was 3,400. These amounts are important because we will then take you to the grants that we've received and the estimates that have been provided to us by the various firms that the district uses. Some of the firms that the district uses don't sell anything. They're uh, engineering firms that review utilities, and we like to have that because it's an independent opinion as opposed to firms that either do air conditioning work or sell equipment and materials. In August of 2019, uh, the district conducted testing at Lincoln and Gaines, and the consultants have completed the draft report for that air quality testing, and that is to compare the Lincoln fitted with MERV 10 and Gaines fit, fitted with MERV 16 in order to review the difference in the improved filtration. A copy of the report was provided to the County Health Department and they have begun to finalize their comments. We actually received the comments from their environmental consultant over the weekend. So our expectation is that we will be able to finish the report soon. Right now, their consultants and our consultants are agreeing on a date to have a, an online meeting to discuss all their questions and try to finalize the report. When it's finished, we bring it to the Board of Education. The Health Department takes it to the Board of Supervisors. Um, if I can quote some of the draft information that is not contested, meaning both agencies have agreed, 
is that the results are positive overall with detection levels below the specified standards and in some cases no detection. Now remember, they both in the report and there are areas where there are no crossings or anything. That's one of those areas where there's agreement. Within the results, the following quote describes the safety for occupancy, which has been one of the focus areas of the various studies. We want to make sure that the inside of our classrooms are safe to occupy by our students and staff. According to the February 2020 draft report, based on the data collected to date, observations and measurements, the chromium-6 in indoor air does not pose an immediate threat to the health and safety of people spending time in the classrooms. Again, this is what you will see in the final report and neither agency <coughs> contested the language, so we, fe we felt comfortable sharing it with you at this time. The Port of Long Beach grant update, uh, it was a, a wonderful uh, event that we received funding totaling $352,000. Um, the Paramount School District received and signed contracts with the Port of Long Beach. Uh, the grant money, as you know, is to, to be used at six Paramount schools to purchase and install high-performance filters. Uh, our district worked with IQ Air, uh, who is a company that has been mentioned before that manufactures high-end filtration systems, and it's also a company that does contract work. We work together with them. They had uh, a wealth of information for the submission of the grant documentation, and the district intends to continue working with IQR for the procurement of L filtration systems and further grants. During our uh, ad hoc committee, we learned that the uh, IQR had applied for further grants on behalf of the district, and since we normally bring those to you first, we ask them to give us the documentation so that we can bring it to the board. You approve it and we keep moving forward. Uh, as soon as we receive that information, we will let you know. The schools and the amounts that we received in that grant, which by the way, do not sit in the district. Uh, wanted to clarify that because I remember Ms. Hansen and another board member, I think Ms. Gomez says, how does the grant work? Once again, we spend the money, the district, so uh, through your authority, let's say we do retrofits by filters, we have to submit reports to the Port of Long Beach, and then they reimburse us. So nothing is sitting anywhere except with the Port of Long Beach, and it is a reimbursable report. So two concerns that we have, we want to make sure everything has receipts, because otherwise we don't get reimbursed, and everything has reports that are uh, auditable, because we will be audited on this. Gaines received $22,431. Immediately you might say, that seems a lot lower than everybody else. Remember, the district already retrofitted the school. So retrofit funding is not present there, just filter funding, funding, which for the, the remainder of the schools is both retrofit and filters. Um, Jackson, 65,000. Keppel, 59,000. Los Cerritos, 70,000. Tanner, 62. And Zamboni, 72. We have a new chart that we will be discussing at the end to answer some of the questions that the board had, where these numbers will be very important when we look at next steps. Any questions so far? Next steps in filter implementation in schools. Uh, the next steps are to finalize the contracting process so that the work can begin at the remaining five sites and procure MERV-16 filters through a vendor like IQ Air. We, we find their filters very good. During the life of the grant, regular progress reports have to be submitted to the Port of Long Beach on a quarterly basis. And the disbursement, this is how we get the funding of grant funds, will occur once completion of the projects, receipt and approval of a disbursement request with supporting documentation. But it is very important that we always clarify, we haven't received a penny, we have to spend the full amount and then we get reimbursed. Now you might see that, why do we talk about procurement? One of the things we wanted to make sure is, if we like IQR filters, and we do, how do we buy them? The board is aware that we have procurement rules. If we buy more than $89,900 worth of anything, we have to go out to bid. We got money for five years worth of filters. It's way above $90,000. So we were exploring with our attorney two possibilities. One, to buy one year at a time, and they don't like that because some people call it bid splitting, that you didn't really do the intent of the law. The other one is sole sourcing. That is that we find a product that we say, this is so good that we don't want to go look at anything else, but the board has to approve it. So right now we're talking with our, with our legal team, and obviously we will continue working with IQ Air because for our team, and it's composed of three parts, the consultant that we have that reviews our utilities, 
our air conditioning company that is under contract. We went out to bid in 2018. It's a four-year bid. So in 2018, we went out to bid. Two companies competed, <coughs> South Bay Air won, and they have a couple of more years on their contract. They said that IQ air filters were better than the other uh, companies they tested. So we would like to use their filters. We just want to make sure we do it in a legal way. And that's our next step. That's why we're working with IQ air. And finally, contract information, the contract process. We have to follow bid laws, so we are looking at the contract as two separate areas. One is the buying of or procurement of filters, which as you know, we like IQ Air. And second is the actual work that will need to be done to retrofit so that the MERS 16 filters can fit into our units. That we will probably have to go out to bid. As I mentioned, the other part, the regular maintenance of air conditioners, we have been under a bid since 2018 that we did, companies applied, and we had a company that's our current vendor. So we will continue providing you information. We are moving as quickly as possible. As a matter of fact, we already sent IQ Air an intent to say we want to buy your filters. We need some help. My understanding, Scott, is their primary person is out of town for now. Or... So, so you're here. We want to get the information immediately. We want to buy your filters, so we just need to make sure we don't violate sole source. And so that now you, you see the person, you know exactly what we're doing. She will get a letter from me tomorrow morning saying, please give us a quote and we'll do a purchase order. And finally, for the retrofit, uh, during the ad hoc committee, IQR mentioned that they are a contractor, which we really uh, liked hearing. So when we go out to bid for the contract work, we will invite at least three firms, IQR and the two companies that have done air conditioning work for the district. Next steps for additional funding opportunities. The staff is seeking grant opportunities through Cal EPA and CARB, which is the California Air Resources Board. These are called supplemental environmental projects. They are, quite frankly, not difficult to apply, nor was the Port of Long Beach, but we appreciate the help of companies that want to help us. So once again, we will indicate interest uh, to IQ Air if they want to continue partnering with us to participate in grant funding opportunities. As I mentioned at the meeting that we had with IQ Air in January 2020, our environmental ad hoc committee, IQ Air indicated that they applied for new district funds in November of 2019 through a grant process. Um, if we get that money, that would be wonderful for the district. The district, however, was unaware of the application and IQ Air indicated that the district must be involved as a recipient agency and approve the grant as district information. Uh, the district has requested copies of the grant information so that we can bring you to you, the board, and we uh, hope and expect your approval. Um, this approval will direct the staff to work with IQ Air to finalize all the documents to hopefully get more funding for more schools. And that's uh, that process. And any questions so far before we go to the funding module? Um, I have uh, lots of comments and then my questions later. Um, my first comment is that lately I've been hearing the word moving forward. Um, I don't find that we're moving forward when we're going back and retracting all this information that, that Mr. Frutos, you have already presented. Um, I want to move forward, um, like we say, move forward. Um, but anyways, at any rate, on page 14, um, you say that um, that the one the district once the district receives the funds, then it would um, pretty much get the filters and whatnot. Um, my concern is that the grant that IQ Air is doing for us, besides the Port of Long Beach grant was already been, has been already work, been worked on since November of 2019. Now, like I stated earlier, in April of 2019, we gave, uh, the board gave uh, authority to Dr. Perez. So you would, one would think that we would already have this uh, paperwork processed or notified of this grant. And then on page 15, uh, you state that our attorney, we have to check with our attorney to make sure we follow bid laws. And it's quite confusing, especially for um, 
our community and actually as I've written grants for myself as a teacher. Um, and so how are you gonna bid when someone's gonna give you already the money? So it's kind of confusing. So those are just comments. And then you said that the, our attorney, when you refer to our attorney, are you talking about um, Jim Romo or what attorney? That is your firm. It's not him. He is a specialist in uh, human resources and negotiations, but another attorney in his firm provides advice on contracts, and we have been asking questions, like we do with every contract, Ms. Delon, to make sure that the board doesn't get in, in any trouble. Because ultimately, you direct us to sign the agreements. Yes, and that's my concern, because we know that this law firm um, has actually given superintendents um, mortgage loans um, and have um, done, I don't know, not Excuse a good representation. Me? Excuse me? I could cite it. Let you me better. speak. Yes, trust me. As, as a teacher, we know that we teach our students to cite information. Nevertheless, on page 16, um, it says January 2020, staff seeking grants. Hmm. Um, we know that IQ Air um, is the one who has been working for us and sought the grants. And we do have grant writers, mind you. And since 2017, when parents like myself were asking the district to get MERV 16 filters, where was our grant writer then? So we wouldn't even be talking about filters if it weren't for IQ Air. So we have to be very specific and letting, you know, in the future, letting IQ Air or any other company know that you're just working for free because that's what you're telling IQ Air. And on the other hand, I know that the MERV 16s by themselves, if we purchase them by themselves, there's no guarantee. How I know that is because my husband is a business owner, and if people come with their own equipment or pieces of equipment, there is no warranty. But that's something to look into. So I wouldn't want something that doesn't really, quite frankly, wouldn't work. So I'm just, I'm just, it just blows my mind. So moving forward, what are we going to do? When is all this paperwork going to get done? And then I could bring the documents um, for you to Thank look you. at. I yes. appreciate that. Are you done? Um, let me remind you of the protocols that we were reminded Are of you during done speaking so someone else could have a turn. Um, Thank you. Mr. Frutos, I'm finished. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, a, a couple of clarifying, and thank you, Ms. De Leon. I, I'm going to try to remember all the comments as questions. The, to, to clarify, the, the money, uh, and this is very important, remember, we will not receive money from the Port of Long Beach until we spend and submit for reimbursement. Uh, regardless of how the application is done, and again, we've been very thankful to IQ Air. We actually consider them a very knowledgeable partner. The district is responsible to submit all the information so that we get reimbursed. So maybe the best term is to say, this is a reimbursable grant. We spend the dollars, then we get reimbursed. Uh, the, the CARB and the EPA Resources Board grants, these are grants that are now available, and as the district was exploring them, uh, and, and Ms. De Leon, you were at the subcommittee meeting, I don't think any of us were aware, I mean, at least I wasn't, and, and I, I didn't see any in the, anybody in the subcommittee, that IQ Air was doing a great job applying for further grants. And I don't think we are recommending sunsetting them all we're asking is, you expect to approve grants before they move forward. And quite frankly, it is the expectation of any granting agency because anybody can apply for a grant, but if it's on behalf of Paramount Unified School District, Paramount eventually has to say, we take responsibility for the grant. I believe that the president of the company accompanied us that day, and she stated that, that the district needs to be involved. So it's something that we like. We just want to make sure that we pause for a second, bring you the information, and continue moving forward. As far as the bid process, we actually have multiple attorney firms that we can use, so I, I will also make it a point to make sure that we get a, an opinion from a secondary firm, uh, because it's not difficult and it won't cost us any money if we use one of our liability attorneys. Uh, ALR is your is your attorney, is, is the board's attorney, and that's why we always go with them first. 
but we certainly have contract attorneys. And quite frankly, we want to be very clear that these contracts are done appropriately, just like any <clears throat> other bid that we do. We, we procure equipment, we procure vehicles, we buy everything. We continue to believe this is a wonderful opportunity. It has brought good money to the district. It allows us to keep moving forward. Uh, Mr. Locke, can you explain our time for the Long Beach grant? How much time do we have to spend the money and move, move forward? The life of the grant is five years, and we can procure some or all or much of um, the needed equipment in, in chunks, all at once, uh, over the five-year period. Um, it's very flexible in that aspect. The grant specifically says that they're, we're getting reimbursed for retrofitting of the AC units and high-efficiency filtration. And so I've asked for some clarification from the port, and, and they seem to be fine with us chunking the purchases in, in, in different ways. Um, we just have to make sure that, like Mr. Frutos has been saying, that whatever we do and however we proceed is an illegal contract method. I have something else to add, by the way. Um, I know I'm on the environmental subcommittee, and we met just once last year, so um, there is no set date or, or and I asked that last time like how often do we meet um, and then at the president at the CSBA training for presidents um, I'm gonna have to uh, make sure I follow um, and get what the information that I need but they had stated that the district has an attorney and it's for the board only so I'm confused. So if we can get the, um, or if I can get the attorney's contract to see who does he represent? Does he help the pre the board? Does he just help? Because uh, I know when I try to um, get a hold of our attorney, it was stated to me through email that I couldn't ad address the the attorney. Only it would be the president and the superintendent. So there's a conflict. I can't cite that, but I want that information so I can have that clarity. Um, I, um, it, I'm sorry. No, you first, ma'am. <laughs> okay. I have a question on on the slides on on page 14, on slide 14 rather. Um, Zamboni Middle School, the 72,290. I know we're building a new a new school. Is it already going to be retrofitted, or this amount? Where does this amount fall into? Great, great question in the sense that we took that into consideration. And again, remember, good partners, when we were working with IQ Air, that grant does not include any of the buildings that will be removed. And we did that on purpose because we didn't want to spend on a building that was about to go away. So the new buildings, as we work with the engineers and the architects, will be made to a specification that the board dictates. If by then we say every uh, district filter will be MERV 16, Two inches will be done if it's something else. So we, we took that into consideration so that, one, we wouldn't have any problems with the grant, and two, new buildings will be specified based on district criteria. Okay. Absolutely. I also have another question. On the Gaines Elementary, it says 22439 You mentioned that the other amount was very important uh, as, a, as a reference, which was 29500 This is 22000 Is there going to be a, a holdup because of a difference? No. So if I can take you to, we worked in the last few days to try to complete this uh, grouping of information. So this is an additional slide outside of the report to give you some background data. Uh, the board remembers that we came to you in June of 2019 with an amount that has been quoted back of about a million dollars. That came from our consultants that actually estimated what it would take to do retrofit. You see it all in the first column. So if you look at the first column mm -hmm. after the names, that's let's call it original estimate. So when we first heard from the board, what would it take for you guys mm -hmm. to move to MERV 16? We started talking to all the companies that have anything to do with HVAC in the district, and they gave us what, believe it or not, was a pretty good estimate. Let me walk you through it. On the second column are the estimates, the original estimates, only for those sites that were awarded. So for example, gains, 29,120, then you see the 29,120 again, but you don't see the sites that were not awarded, just those six. So the grand total for the district on those six sites, if you go all the way to the bottom, 
is $239,330. So that means that our estimate more than a year ago <laughs> was, uh, you know, for $239,000 to do the sites that eventually we got a grant, even though we did all of them. When you look at the next column, it's an estimate per unit. How do we know that? Because two columns further is the number of units per site. That begins to tell the board, oh, you have 51 air conditioners at Gaines, you have 42 at Holiday, at Jackson, etc. If you look at Zamboni, Ms. Gomez, which is a good question, you'll see only 40. Well, it's a big school. How can that be when uh, uh, Jackson has 42? It is because we didn't take into consideration all those buildings that will go away. So the brand new building will have brand new air conditioning systems with the latest specifications, and that's reflected there. Then if you go to the next column, average award per unit, that means on the Port of Long Beach grant, how much we got for every school. So if you notice, we got for gains only $439 per unit because the work was already done by the district. Mm -hmm. That's at about $100 a filter. That's almost five years. If we change once a year, remember IQ air specifications mm -hmm. have been better than any of the other filters. They mentioned that their filters can last up to a year. Right now, that is being tested as part of the gains process. So it'll, it'll show as part of the cost. For the others, it's very similar. About $1,500 for Jackson, $1,500 for Keppel, fourteen dollars for Los Cerritos. So that's about how much we got per unit. So you can begin to see when you did the work is less, when you will do the work is more. The next one, the average estimate retrofit cost, is what we have received as information from two companies. One was information that we got from IQ Air, and the other is information from our air conditioning company. And these are averages. So to complete the work at Jackson, based on the estimates that we got, we'll take about $31,000, about thirty-six dollars for Keppel, about forty dollars for Los Cerritos, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So if you go all the way to the bottom, right now our most reasonable estimate to retrofit is about $187,000. Now if you go to the last column, that's what we estimated more than a year ago, 210. So if you look, 187 is current, 210 was last year. The difference is about 11.5%, which means that the original estimate we did of over a million dollars is gonna be pretty spot on. It's gonna be close, probably within 10 to 12%. So this allows us to begin to see all these figures that we're getting from the different partners are good and are real and match our grant. And that's why we did this. So we continue procuring now that we have costs that are matching our original estimate. I have another question also. Um, you mentioned, and it's my understanding, and I may be incorrect, but it's my understanding uh, from the from page 14, that amount, we still have to bid out for the services. Is that what I'm understanding? Or I, I, I don't believe I'm understanding what you're saying, because I would want to move forward also and at least get these uh, and done. I mean, you can't put a dollar amount on a human being. We have too many cancers within the within the uh, community, and it's sad to see. And so, if we can do something sooner than later, I mean, we've been at this for a long time. And and we couldn't agree with you more. We want to move as soon as possible. We just want to make sure everything's done legally. The least thing that we want is to come to you with a great idea and we execute, and later on we miss something. So what we've asked is just to make sure there are two numbers that we always operate with. When we do any kind of construction work, it's $15,000. Okay. If it's gonna be over 15, we have to go out to bid. Right. So what we're asking these companies, and the request for proposals is finished, we're gonna ask three companies, IQ Air, uh, South Bay, which is our engineering HVAC company, and the other company that proposed, tell us how you will do this retrofit. Will it be uh, sheet metal work, which we believe requires bidding? Will it be an adapter? Well, does that work well? What is the work that you'll do? Because we need to come to you, the board, and say it has to be bidded or not. The filters, it's a procurement. We already know. If we exceed $90,000, we have to. There's no question. We, we've gotten the same answer from everyone, including the procurement specialist at LACO. So that's why we divide it into two, to make sure we get the best information. And what these companies tell us will dictate how we come to you as quickly as possible with this is what we want to do. So for our, for our residents here, here, our audience, and for the audience that are listening to us, because it's, it's a very important topic, how much longer do we have to wait? When, 
in three months, six months, a year, because we've been at this for a long time and we live in the community and these community members come to us and say, why are you guys sitting on it? These are our children in these classrooms that we're not sitting in there, but they are, and they are our future. If we already have cancer patients now, these students, I mean, I've heard about students having bloody nose, having cancer. I mean, how much more does it take for us to get on this? And, and it's a good question. After the grant was received, the, the district interest is to move as quickly as possible. So one of the things we wanted to make sure is that we could come to you and say, we've done all the legal background. Here is what we intend to do. We're done with that. We, we finished procuring. Okay. We are looking at uh, sending, again, coming to you if it's sole source or simply buying the filters. So not, not a year, not six months. We expect within the next couple of board meetings to come to you and say, this is the final for procurement. For the bidding process, we need to make sure that we have job walks. That's also fair to the companies to say, please come and tell us what you're going to do. So that will require by law to give them a few weeks to respond. And again, we're expecting that within the next two board meetings, we can come and give you an update, say these are the companies that agreed to work with us, and then the board will approve. So are we saying, and my understanding is that by June, I'm giving four months, I'm giving March, April, May, June, that's four months. By June, we should start this work on these schools? My expectation is before then. We are inviting these companies now. As a matter of fact, with IQ Air, uh, Scott has been in contact with the company since last week trying to say we want to move on procurement. And again, it's because we find their filters the better ones. They don't, they already make a good filter. Now it's up to us to find a way to buy it legally. That's what we're working on. With the contract work, that is something that we need to make sure that we do appropriately after we know what they're going to do. Mm -hmm. So that's why we needed to do a request for proposal. Some of these things we, we don't have a choice. We cannot just go use a credit card because you, the board, are responsible that we use California public contract code appropriately. And we want to. We want to buy. We want to do this as quickly as possible. Yeah. So when will the bids go out? Well, assuming within that we get week, responses, or? we are looking at the next few weeks. The bids will go out within the next few weeks. Yes. And how long before they'll have... What, what's the time frame the for that? Fairness is we have to give them a, a, a few weeks to respond and to do job walks. Every contractor knows what that means. They come in, they look at everything. In the case of two of the three companies, they already know our facility, so it should move quickly. And once that's done, we come to you for award and we move forward. So and by my, the end my, of March, you think? By the end of March, we should have the, the bidding process near completion. I, I'd rather give the board exact dates once we put them in after we talk to the companies. Certainly around that. So could we ask for a report back on the bid process at, um, at the April meeting so, so that we know where we are? I would like to recommend that I give you reports more often. We, okay. we will do it every, at every step that we finish, uh, no less than every uh, month at every board meeting. Okay. I mean, we have to be transparent. If the law says that we have to bid these, we have to show transparency to our community. And if we don't, we won't. Right. Any other questions from the board? I have one quick question. Um, the, the testing results, when they, the, on the second, the last testing, with the MERV 10s and the, uh, versus the MERV 16s at Lincoln and at Gaines, was there any difference? Was you there know, any technical difference? I, I'd rather wait until we get the, the actual report from the two consultants, Ms. Mm -hmm. Hansen. I can tell you that in, in my untrained eyes, those paragraphs at the bottom is the best that we could okay. capture about wondered. safety. But those are questions that when those consultants come, I would encourage the board to ask because we don't have the expertise. And you think we'll have that? Um, we'll have the report by the end of this month. Well, I can't believe how long the health department, uh, as as each one of the last three cycles, does a very strong due diligence. So do our consultants. As mm -hmm. I mentioned to the board this weekend, they sent us the first response from their consultants, which we appreciated. It looks very positive. Mm -hmm. So we're basically saying, if you're done, we're done. Okay, so I think we know where we are there. Uh, any other questions? Madam President, if I, may I say a comment, please? I just, mm -hmm. I, this is not what Board Member De Leon stated. I know that. But just in case there are any questions I, out there, this superintendent, this superintendent as in myself, 
uh, does not have a mortgage provided by any law firm. Thank so you. I just want to make that clear uh, to the community. Thank you. <clears throat> Ruben, before you leave, I do have a couple of other questions. We also had a conversation about HEPA filters in the gas company machines. And I believe that Ms. DeLeon was going to give you information about purchasing those from someone who is going to be able to give us um, those filters with a discount. Did you get some information so that we can follow up on that also? I haven't received information. We, we began to do some procurement through our own for two types of replacements. One, the carbon filters for odors and something that they call true HEPA filters. Uh -huh. And we will get information. I would appreciate it if somebody has a company that we can contact, happy to do it. Okay, and I understand that it takes two filters per machine. Is that correct? That is our understanding. Okay. And I think that uh, for those schools that are not part of this grant, I believe that I would like to ask the board, should we move forward with getting those filters into those machines in those classrooms? Yes, I would until agree. Until we get the other, until we get further information on other grants. Yeah, I would agree. Definitely agree. Um, also, I emailed um, Dr. Perez on the provider for those uh, HEPA filters for those machines. Um, so. Yeah. Next time I know to CC you and um, make okay. sure to carve and copy other people. Maybe somebody in the audience. So, so she'll share that with you, and then you guys will work on that. And uh, yes, yeah. because until I receive direction from the board as a whole, I, I cannot move forward on on that. So I appreciate the board this evening providing uh, consensus on direction. Okay, so. I'd like consensus direction so that we can move forward with those HEPA filters for the machines in the classrooms from the gas company. Is that okay with everybody? Yes. 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 Okay. Let's move forward on that. Madam President, if you don't mind, Mr. Frutos, can you repeat, because I see you a little perplexed. Can you repeat, can you share your understanding of what the board is expecting as a next step? And then this provides the board an opportunity to clarify or add anything that we may leave out. So uh, as much as it, 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 it's going to sound and, and <laughs> a little difficult based on your direction, I understand your direction is an interest in us moving forward with what they call the Aramex Pro units to be fitted with uh, true HEPA filters uh, for those schools that do not qualify for a grant. Mm -hmm. uh, the qualification process for MERS 16s for those schools is in process, so just wanted to clarify that. I have uh, not costed out how many filters will be required for all the schools that don't have uh, a grant right now, and remember my bid limit. So what I would appreciate it if the board allows us at least a little bit of time to see if once again we're going to exceed $90,000 because I will have to come back to you and we will have the same discussion. Now that is different, Mr. Frutos, from the Aeromax machines, buying filters for the Aeromax machines. No, that, that, it isn't different. That, Anytime we buy materials or supplies and we exceed $90,000, we have to go out to bid. Okay. So once again, I'll, I'll check. So what, what you're saying is we do not know for clarification yet um, how much those filters are gonna cost uh, for the, it's about 300 machines that we have, um, so and that's 600 yes. filters then, right? It, I, 600. If, if, if we fit them to every classroom in those schools that do not have the MERV 16s, uh, I will need to make sure that we have enough of those suitcase boxes. If not, we would have to come to you with direction to allow me to buy not just the filters, mm -hmm. but the machines for those classrooms. That but what I'm it. hearing is direction for the the ones that we do have in our possession, which is the 300, and uh, and to buy filters for those. Okay. To put those in classrooms where the grants the grant is not covering uh, right now. So. To, to clarify so that the board is not surprised, uh, starting tomorrow we will try to get the best pricing and I appreciate it, Ms. De Leon, if you have a company that you believe will give us a good price, we will get a quote, we will immediately submit it to the superintendent. If the quote exceeds $90,000, we will add to the quote the legal information as to what our obligation is on behalf of the board. Okay. Happy to do. Um, also for, for the next meeting, if we can have how many number of units that each of these schools have 
because I know we only have the ones that are, are on this um, and the other ones are blank. If we can have all of them, that way we know exactly how many are in the district. That would be helpful. How many yeah. units of, of each the school. at each school? At each yes. school. Yeah. At each Do you school. understand that, Mr. Frutos? Absolutely. Yes. yes. How many uh, HVAC units? We will do that gladly. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. We and could actually, as soon as we have that board members, we could send that to you in a Wednesday report. That's fine. That would be great. Thank you. And it, does that conclude the next direct the uh, direction from the board? Your expectations uh, as we move forward. Uh, under my understanding, that is for the ones for the gas. Correct for the gas company now. For the Aeromax machines, Aeromax so three hundred right. Aeromax and machines. And so that's the next step for that. Yes. And now, can you clarify just to make sure that everybody understands what is the understanding for the next step of the IQ Air ones? Yes, Mr. Frutos, would you share your understanding of what that is? Um, for the current grant that we have, which let's call it the Long Beach grant, okay. we will continue working with IQ Air to get a quote for the filters and at the same time get a second attorney's opinion to make sure that the bid limits apply. We believe they do so that we can move as fast as possible to qualify for a purchase. If the bid limit is required, we will come back to the board and say these are our choices for the procurement of those filters. For the new grants, meaning our schools that haven't received the Port of Long Beach grant, we will continue our application process for both the Cal EPA and other grants and continue, uh, well, as soon as we receive the information from IQ Air of the application in November 19, I will agendize it for the board to approve at the next board meeting so that that can move forward. Yeah, I guess I'm not understanding one, one um, portion of it. You mentioned we're going to get a quote from IQ Air for the filters. I thought that that's what this that the the grants that we just saw right now. How much they were going to give us? The grant is for the award that includes both the retrofit and the filters. And the filters that we procured for gains were about a year ago. We we never presume that pricing remains static, so we are asking them as a courtesy for the latest pricing, and we are happy to move forward with that. Again, within the confines of our bid limits, which are $90,000. And we're looking to do that within the next two months, you said? We are looking to do that immediately. If we were to get a quote uh, within the next few days, we will agendize to come to you at the next board meeting with our options. And then my last question is, um, hypothetically, if for the other schools that are not listed here, and we don't receive any grant money, can we come back, and of course we can't, but uh, to come back to the board and see how we can um, put air filters in those other schools without grant money? You, the board, has the ability to utilize your funding as you, as you uh, agree. If you direct us, let's say that we were, well, let's, let's assume some positive, that we were to get it for a few more schools, but not all of them, mm -hmm. but your directive was we want more of 16 at all schools. You would probably ask me, find me a source of funding that's appropriate. I can tell you already with bond money, for example, we might be able to fund some of the retrofit, but certainly not the filters. Remember, uh, bond money can only be used for capital equipment that has a longevity of a certain amount of years. That's why you cannot buy sometimes small equipment and things that have a, a short life. But other sources of funding exist, including the general fund, et cetera. So under that direction, we would come to the superintendent and say, these are sources of funding that the board can use, and then you provide the superintendent direction. Do we know when the application for those other two grants that you mentioned are due, or when we should be submitting them? I will get the exact days because they're two different sources, and right. I'll also check with IQR. Remember, they already applied. So technically, from what I understood, and, and again, Ms. De Leon, uh, Ms. Hansen, and the superintendent were there. They were already submitted in November 19. Okay, so, so what I would... want to mess that up. No. What we want to make sure is that you, the board, have the opportunity to take action because our understanding is to any grantor, we have to send them a district letter saying, yes, we, we want this money. So what I would like to know is when will we find out if we qualify for those other grants? The grants that you're talking about that have already been submitted, when should we find out if we're 
Except, except well, we haven't that approved not. yet. That's what he's saying. It has to come back to the board to this approve is, this it. This is again, uh, yeah. yeah, these are grants that, that IQR applied on behalf of the district without without, without you approving. So attention. I would need to check with them on that. Our, okay. our goal is hopefully that we provide them your approval so that it complements what they've done and the grants okay. are approved. So do we know when that, that's going to happen, to, to bring back to the board well, for that Well, that part? happened already at the meeting that Ms. DeLeon and Ms. Hansen were there. We asked IQR we to asked send IQR us that documentation. Oh. So the board took action. the grant to, okay. to, uh, to Ruben, and, and we haven't gotten it yet. No. It's okay. coming, though, right? Mm -hmm. I would like also to share with the board that the CEO for IQR was present at the meeting as well mm -hmm. and shared with us that they the, the way that IQR does operate is that they do include, of course, school boards uh, in any grant application process because uh, the they will be receiving requests for information and requests for information so obviously the school district has to be involved and the CEO clarified that for us yeah okay so first I'd like to address the poll application that IQ Air Foundation submitted on behalf of PUSD so we worked on on-site assessments with our technicians we completed the application with Mr. Fructose approval and submitted it to poll understanding that PUSD did get approved on six schools. The application is a total program. This is not filters only. The program we quoted includes the pre-assessment, which we did. It includes full installation of those filters and a service contract of five years. What does that mean? We assure the quality of those filters for the five years that we have them in. We test them, we're here, we do on-site environmental literacy programs, we do indoor monitoring. This is a quality controlled program. We don't participate in bidding out a filter when we don't have QC. We are air quality experts. We've seen this before. In the past, IQ Air has done this for years with South Coast, with other school districts, where if a school district wants to piecemeal, we can't assure the quality of how that filter is getting installed. We don't know what happens when we deliver it. These are variables that IQ Air cannot control. And because of that, we can't guarantee it. As I mentioned to Sonia, I can't guarantee that the quality of those filters will be the same if we bid it out and just deliver it to you. What we can guarantee is if we do this full program, which is what we've been working on, and we've done a lot of work for PUSD, took us two months to complete the application for poll. We submitted to Mr. Fructose and to Scott. They approved it. They thanked us. I got a letter of thank you very much for all your help. We submitted it. It is a full turnkey solution. PUSD doesn't have to do anything. We control it all. We do the reporting. We do it all for you. You guys are the school district. You shouldn't be worrying about this. You should just be worrying about educating our kids. Let mm -hmm. us do the work for you. That's what we thought we were doing here. And now we're understanding, give us a bid on filters. It doesn't make sense to me. It, it just doesn't. We are air quality experts. We work with SCA QMD. So this doesn't make sense. If this is how you want to pursue it, I'll go back to Glory, my CEO. But I have to be very honest and transparent. This is a full turnkey program. We do it all. We want to make sure you have the cleanest air possible for your children in these classrooms. So that's the first part of it I want to address. Second part of it is the SEP application. I submitted a SEP application on behalf of the schools that didn't get awarded. I did it on behalf of the Coalition for Paramount for Clean Air. We did it with the EJ Environmental Justice Group's submission to say, yes, we would like you to submit it. Since this has happened, and we know you guys have to approve the SEP application, it has been withdrawn. I withdrew it from CARB. 
because we would need your approval to move forward. So I can't submit it on behalf of IQ Air Foundation. It would have to be submitted from Paramount Unified School District. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah, I want, mm -hmm. I want you to know because we don't have the school board's approval on it. We had to take it back because that's the way we were. We, do, we thought that we were trying to move forward and hurrying to try to get some more money for the additional schools. But in hindsight, you have to approve it. So that's where we're at right now with that. But I, I just want to assure you, I mean, this is, this is air quality that has to be monitored, that has to be serviced properly. And I understand what you, ha what you mean about the bids, and I understand all that. But that's not what we do as a foundation and as a company. Piecemealing this out, we have proven track record. It doesn't work. It just doesn't work. But you tell us how you would like to proceed, and of course, I'll take it back to my CEO. And we appreciate the fact that your company, um, you know, tries to make it easy by packaging all together. Yeah. We just have to be sure that the bid laws and procurement laws are all followed um, so that our board doesn't in any way run into any legal issues later Understood. on. That's our, our, our job is to protect the board from that. And at the same time, we understand the urgency, of course, of moving forward as soon as possible. Understood. So thank you for your clarification. Yeah. Anything we could do to help. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So board members, I just want to be clear on what to expect because this is <laughs> one of the most the complicated. I have to honestly say it's one of the most complicated uh, discussions that happen uh, with regard to uh, filters and all. But we are moving forward in, in seeking uh, peer procurement for the filters for the 300 Aeromax machines. We're going to see how much they cost. And if you have to vote on it to, to, um, you know, to procure it, because it's over $90,000, we will definitely do that and follow the law. And that we can have back by the next meeting. Next meeting. Yes, right? yes. Yeah. That uh, so that should move very quickly, and we will place those Aramax uh, machines in classrooms that are not part of the uh, Port of Long Beach grant. Now, that's 300 classrooms. That's not as many, but you will re re receive information on the number of classrooms left uh, in the units in the entire district because you have uh, requested that. Board member De Leon has sent me information about the Aeromax filters. I had sh she sent me an email about that, as she stated. I shared that with our board president before the last board meeting we had, which is how this um, the board president asked for this whole uh, presentation today. Uh, so thank you for the the uh, direction uh, this evening because. You must understand, board members, I have to receive direction from all of you together on, on, on something, and we appreciate that because uh, not, I'm not a lone ranger. Uh, we are a team. So we will provide that information for you, move as quickly as possible. We will continue. I, I'm very appreciative of the clarification on the SEP grant because now, uh, since they have stopped, that means that we have to pick it up and we have to apply for uh, the SEP um, grant, which should allow us more money, hopefully if awarded, uh, for the remaining classrooms and schools uh, in, in our district. And, and I will provide during the Wednesday report, again, the number of classrooms left um, and, and number of units. the number of units, units. left in, in yeah. classrooms, in schools, and the rest of the district. Board members, is there anything else? I, now I'm kind of confused. Oh, um, sorry. With the young lady, sorry, I forgot your name. Nancy. Nancy, thank you, Nancy. Um, it was a great inf information, by the way. Um, since Nancy mentioned and and Claire um, and Mr. Frutus, uh, um, make me please understand. We're saying we we're, she's saying we should not bid out. We're saying we're going to bid out. I just need to follow what the next steps are regarding that because I'm kind of confused there. What she is saying is that what they provide, IQ Air, is an entire package. Correct. For this amount of money that we saw um, on, on page it's, 14. It's the entire okay. package. Okay. That's, what, that's how they operate. Correct. They don't, um, they, don't guarantee, they don't have QC, which is quality control of the filters, if somebody just buys their filters. Correct. They can't guarantee that their filters would work 
right. on any given unit. Is that correct, Nancy? Right. No, th that that's part what I understood. she's saying. My my thing. My question is, what what are, are how are we moving forward after yeah. what she what she what she said? Are we going to go ahead and and well, there are bidding laws, mm -hmm. rules, Ed Code regard re, uh, regarding how we should operate, and that's where Mr. Fruta. So you want to share again um, what the process will be? So as as I was mentioning before, we have asked. Uh, IQR to provide us information that, that they have. That's how the grant happened. That's a full package mm -hmm. and more as a service. Uh, the service includes filters. Uh, whether we want to call them air solutions, they are air filters mm -hmm. that go into our air conditioning units. The board awarded the maintenance of our air filters to a company in 2018 through a bid process. So at least for the next couple of years, the regular change of an air filter, and if you remember from your filter at home, these are units that are squares that are inserted to, to protect the intake of air and provide better air. Uh, we, we don't disagree with IQ Air that their filters are, are good. However, since the board awarded that maintenance to another company, we, we cannot just give it away to somebody else. The retrofit part, we agree completely with IQ Air. We want to do this work to the best of our ability. We would prefer that it's done right. So we are asking them to tell us what kind of work would need to be done because that allows us to come to you and say, absolutely, let's just give them the work it can be done. Or based on the opinion of one or multiple attorneys, we have to go out to bid. So what we are asking is just seeking clarification with one understanding, and that is that for just the regular maintenance of our air conditioning units, you may remember that we got Prop 39 money, and we have purchased more than 260 brand new air conditioning units, very large, over the last three years. They're brand new. All that was done through bidding. So we cannot reverse that. This district has done a wonderful job buying many, many brand new air conditioning units. So our air conditioning units are very good and, and brand new, but all that was done through a bid that included the regular change of filters. So where if we were a district that hadn't done anything and a company came in and said, we can do it all, here's a grant, and we applied, we would be asking a different question. Can they provide that as a service and we don't do anything? And the answer might be yes. The challenge is that we did a lot of air conditioning work over the last three years, and all of it has been bidded. Mm -hmm. So it's a little bit different, and at the same time, we want to make sure that, that we have the best filtration. That's what we're asking them. You guys tell us what you want to do to retrofit these filters, and we would love to invite them to participate. It's, mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's something that we, we perhaps did a little more than some. But certainly with those 260 units, you, the board, have allowed us to buy a lot of units, a lot of it through grant funding of Prop 39 and others. So I would, in conclusion, Nancy, I would just encourage IQWare to just submit the bid, the, the bid proposal for as you work for the entire piece, because we'll be researching that and hopefully we'll be able to bring that to the board uh, for approval and be able to, to move forward. So the sooner the better. Okay. Thank you, board members. Yep. Okay. Um, would everybody like to take a five-minute break? Anyone? No. No? You're good. Okay. We're down to consent items. These items are considered routine and may be enacted by a single motion. Any item needing discussion may be moved to the appropriate okay, section of the good. agenda upon the request of any member of the board. We're up to board meeting, board, board meeting yeah. calendar. What did I miss? Oh, I missed. I'm sorry. Board meeting calendar. Let's go back a second. Okay. Superintendent. So, Madam uh, President and board members, so I have, as you uh, read on the Wednesday report, I have requested of the board um, to approve one of these two dates for a study session on proposed new initiatives. Uh, we do study sessions uh, on proposed new initiatives. 
to give us time to present to the board new initiatives that we have and also allow you time uh, to ask questions and, and research information that you may need so that when items come before you uh, as a board, you have informed information, you are informed to make a good decision. So it's either Monday, April 27th or Tuesday, April 28th at 5.30 p.m. Okay, what is your pleasure? Which it, date? I'm sorry, what was the date? April? Either Monday, April 27th or Tuesday, April 28th. I'd say the Tuesday. I vote for Tuesday. I'm sorry, which day? The 28th. 28th. And that's at 5.30? 28th, okay yes. with everybody? Yeah, that's fine with me. I'm yes. Okay. Thank you. I need motions. Okay, we're good. Need, need I motions. Need motions. 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 Oh. Approved. I'm sorry, I'll I need a motion. Session. I'll take a motion, please. I'll move. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Are we voting online? Aye. Yes. Oh. Yes. Yeah. It didn't pop up. Mine didn't pop up either. It's coming. Oh, oh. there it is. Aye. What did I do? Okay. Um, How many did you get? I board member Garcia. Yes. Yes. Okay. And I have board member Delance. Yes. Okay. So we're um, I'm closing the vote. Okay. Did it come up this time? Yeah, it came oh. up. Versus working. Okay. <clears throat> we'll get this together. We yes. really will. Okay, so it's a five zero vote for um, Thank you. Tuesday, April 28th. Okay, we're down to the consent items. Okay, are there any questions on anything on the consent item? Yes, I have one question on uh, page, um, if you scroll down, it's page nine of 15, but if you look at the page numbers, page two of the classified personnel. It's on the personnel report, okay. Correct. Okay, we'll open that one. Page, when you scroll down, nine, nine of 15. Okay, everybody open your personnel report. What page was it, board, board, board member Gomez? 9 of 15. If you, scroll, oh. if you scroll down, it shows you the number on the left-hand side, left-hand corner on the top. When you scroll down, each Got page it. comes up. Page 15, you said? Yeah, 9, page nine. 9. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. Mm -hmm. This doesn't go any faster than flipping pages, I have to say. Okay. Um, my question is uh, for the four employees um, on the short term for instructional assistant ECE NT 5.5 hours each against ECE. I noticed that it only has one date, June 12, 2020 only. Is there a reason why it's only one date? Dr. Morales? Yes, the previous uh, PR was submitted and they uh, omitted the last day uh, of the work year for the staff. They have a staff meeting and a close up for the year. So previously they were approved, uh, but not through the last day of the working school year. Oh, this is makeup pay for these employees, is it not? Yes, it's just for the one day oh, one to day. make sure that they complete the year. Okay. So, so when you say makeup pay, they come to work that day or they're making it up during the year and then we're just saying that they're getting paid this day? No, this PR allows them to make sure that they come to work that day. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So it's moving forward. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? If we, it, just one last question on that. If we hire any more employees, would their names pop up later for the same date for that? No. If okay. if we hired more employees, we'd make sure that it went through uh, okay. the twenty. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's all I have. I have a question on page eleven of the personnel report. Yes. Okay. Okay, so it says working out of class uh, classification. What does that mean? Is that does that mean that in addition to their 
position that they're holding, they're working in a different classification? It means that someone is, is out for that uh, classification, so they're working in that place. So there could be a, it's a backfill process. So they're taking on more responsibility doing this higher level work. So that's why they're paid out of classification as it's written in the classified uh, CSEA contract. So then would they get an additional amount where it says rate monthly or is it like all together what they're earning? So they wouldn't get their regular pay, which is slightly lower than what's listed here. Mm -hmm. They would get this out of classification uh, pay, not in conjunction with what they make. This is what they would make for that period of time that they work out of classification. So it's not like a monthly 10000 er, earning $10,000? Because I was like, whoa, that's a good position. Um, yeah, it it's just within... within uh, January to June 30, 2020, they, the, the person would earn $10,878,000, correct? Right, right, but the not whole the whole time. Pay, yes. Okay, because I was like, oh, oh one month? No. Wow. No, it is, no, it is monthly. Yeah. That is the rate monthly. Oh, these these monthly. individuals are on the rate monthly, and sometimes it's for work that they're actually doing or uh, for the period of time that they backfill for the position. So that is the monthly salary for these positions at that rate. If I could get the, including um, their, I'm sorry, it, in, in, that that is including their regular pay. No, they don't get their regular pay. They, they so receive this. They one. might. So someone who uh, is making six thousand nine hundred for the month or the period of time, and you'll see the dates that they do that. For those days, they make that rate. But it's only for the days in which they take on those added responsibilities. Okay, Thank we're you. good with all that. Okay, any other questions on the consent items? If not, I'll take a motion. I'll make the motion to approve the consent items. A second? I'll move. Okay, we have a, a, a motion and a second. Oh, I'll second. That's what I thought. You yeah, sorry. <laughs> okay, ready to vote? All those in favor, please vote or oppose. Okay, all votes are in. I'll be closing the vote. Okay, we're good. Okay, we're down to action items. Uh, 7.1. Uh, resolution 19-28, Prop 13, is a public preschool, K-12, and College Health and Safety Bond Act of 2020, Assembly Bill 48. I have a question. Can we make the motion first or can we ask questions first? No, I'm sorry. I'll take a motion. I'll take a motion for this item. I'll move. I'll second. Thank you. Okay, now questions or comments? Okay. Thank my, you for... This is con I'm confused. Okay, here. it's okay. Um, my question is, uh, will this bond also include adult school facilities since we are a pre-K to adult school? District, I understand that the that the proposition does not have it. The proposition does say K, uh, K, K, T, K through 12 and university funding. However, since we are, since we are a, a, a district that includes adult school, I think we can probably add more. We cannot add less, but we can add at least more to this resolution for our district. Um, I would like to inquire on that. It specifically states. Um, public preschool and K through 12. It doesn't um, outline adult education. So my understanding is that it does not cover adult education. Is that your understanding as well, Mr. Frutos? There is one component uh, that doesn't specify directly adult ed, but there are $50 million for career technical education. And we asked actually the, the legislative analyst office today if it could encompass adult ed after we received your question, Ms. Gomez. 
and the superintendent is correct. They, they didn't answer in the affirmative. They said they'll get back to us, but the language allows the district TK-12. So any of our facilities could potentially qualify. It is a state bond, so remember, we would have to show uh, matching. Um, we would have to show need mm -hmm. or disrepair mm -hmm. or aging. This bond is specifically designed for facilities that are over 75 years old, so the district can apply. Uh, the CT is guaranteed 50. Not that we would get it, but it, at least the money has been allocated. If we get more information, we will pass it along, but that's what we got today after we got your question. And unfortunately, just for the record, $50 million is not a lot of money. No, it's not. No, yeah, for the I, state. I, I, I understand that. For CTE. Okay. Okay, so um, ready to vote? <laughs> All those in favor? Okay. Or opposed? Please vote. You're getting all of us now? Okay, everybody's in. We'll be closing the vote. And it's a 5 0 vote. Thank you. Motion is approved. Okay, 7.2 Internship Credential Program Agreement with National University. Are there? Uh, I'll take a motion. I'll make um, a motion that we approve. The uh, internship credential program. I'll take a second. I'll second. Are there any questions or comments? Okay, we'll take a vote. Okay, all votes are in. I'm closing okay. the vote. It's a 5 0 vote. 5 0 vote. Motion is approved. 7.3, Resolution 19-29, Teachers Instructing Departmental de, uh, de, Departmentalized Single Subject Classes for, for Educational Code 44256B. I'll make a motion to approve. I have a second. I'll second. Are there any questions or comments? Hearing none, please vote. All votes are in. I'll be closing the vote. It's a 5 0 vote. Okay, motion approved. Item 7.4 Adopt Resolution 19 30, Teachers Instructing Single Subject Classes for Educational Code Section 44263 for the 2019 20 school year. I need I'll, a motion. I'll make a motion to approve 7.4. I'll second. Okay, are there any questions or comments? Hearing none, please vote. Okay, all votes are in. we are closing the vote. It's a 5-0 vote. Okay, the motion carried, 5-0. 7.5, approve the list of teaching, teachers instructing subjects per educational code section 44258.7b. Coaching for the 2019-20 school year. I'll take a motion. A motion. A second. I'll second. Are there any questions or comments? Hearing none, we'll take a vote. Please vote. Okay, all, all votes are in. I'll be closing the vote. It's a 5 0 vote. Okay, motion carried 5 0. 7.6 update job description, title change, and salary range for library technician. I'll motion. <laughs> I'll second. Okay, are there any. I'm sorry, um, who motioned? I'll motion. And who second? Okay. Okay, are there any questions or comments? Hearing none, please vote. I'd like to thank you for the work that you guys did on this. Okay, all the votes are in. I'll be closing the vote. It's a 5 0 vote. Okay. Thank you. Motion carried 5 0. 
7.7 employment application, uh, I'm sorry, employment authorization for one additional school-based occupational therapist for special education. I'll take a motion. I'll move. A second? I'll, I'll second. second. Go ahead. Are there any questions or comments? Yes, I have a question. I would like to know the number, the, the numbers of, um, sorry, the number of students between 2018-2019. Um, we, we have the data for 17-18 and 19-20, but we don't have the data for it. And I think the superintendent yeah. answered that yes. today. Yes, but I want it to be, students yes, I just wanted to be um, transparent to our, to our community. Do you have it in public? And um, do we foresee more, more increases over the years for preschool having having special needs? I can answer the question of last year's numbers. We had 114 uh, students receive uh, in need of services per their IEP, so it's an increase of 30 students for this year. So since we're looking at a declining enrollment, do you think we're going to see a declining also in a pre preschool special needs students? I doubt it. It looks like our numbers are growing all the time. There are so many students who have who have, you know, in need of these services. The, the reality so is that, you know, your guess is as, um, as yeah. good as ours as they come in and, and the preschool level. We yeah. just, and we don't know. It's great that we're able to catch them, okay. you know, yeah. to catch the, the issues early. Well, I'm great to see, that, um, I'm glad to see that we are hiring our own instead of sending them out to these agencies. Thank you. So. Yes. We try. And hopefully we can do yeah. more of that in the future. That would be great. We want to, for sure. Thank Anytime you. Anytime you run into an occupational therapist mm -hmm. that's working for a school district, tell them how great we are mm -hmm. and try to get them to come to us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, we voted, correct? No. Oh, we did not. We did not vote. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Please vote. Mine did not pop up. I'm a yes. Okay. Okay, all votes are in. I'll be closing the vote, and it's a 5 0 vote. Actually, mine just popped up now. <laughs> Don't know why. <laughs> okay, 7.8 updated criteria for reclassification of English learners. I'll take a motion. I'll move. A second, please. I'll second. Are there any questions or comments? Hearing none, please vote. Okay, all votes are in. I'll be closing the vote. It's a 5 0 vote. Motion carried 5 0. Uh, 7.9 Sports for Learning Incorporated. I'll take a motion. I'll make a motion to approve 7.9. I'll have a second, please. I'll second. I do, I do have one question just for the um, our community members. Uh, what other school districts are using um, sports for learning, and how do they see the program working or not? You want Renee? Uh, Dr. Jeffries, would you address the answer? I went on their website, too, mm -hmm. and there was a lot of information there. Mm -hmm. Pulling up an email right now because I asked that question today. Just bear with me. So I spoke to someone from Sports for Learning and I asked the same question. And so he gave me a list of nearby programs that are currently running. Downey Unified has uh, at least one school, Fountain Valley, Lawndale Elementary, LAUSD has a few schools, Magnolia Elementary, Orange Unified, and Santa Ana Unified. And then what kind of data will you be collecting um, if we approve these programs? So these programs are being funded through LCAP uh, 
particularly for chronic absenteeism. And so that's mm -hmm. the data that we'll be looking at. Oh. Any other questions, Bruce? I, I have a question because um, I would like to have the data beforehand. And then how does it correlate with students? You mentioned students that have um, poor attendance. So let me see. So how, I want to see how that correlates mm -hmm. um, in previous uh, school districts that have uh, purchased this program, because that's one area that we are concerned, but we are also concerned or should be concerned um, with math with ELA, and so I, I would rather spend $52,000 on something that I could see directly impact a student, uh, whether it's, um, you know, for behavior and we track how does this uh, help the student, because we know already that uh, PE is, a, it's mandated. Teachers have to teach it, and there's, depending on the age, grade level, there are certain minutes they, that, that they have to um, accomplish. Why? Because we know physical education enhances uh, the brain and it enhances uh, student learning. So I'm not in any way um, contradicting this, but I would like to have data because listening to my community, I don't want to just keep packing and keep packing and putting things and not knowing how we're collecting data. And it's really easy to collect data versus, oh, well, they showed up more. But so then my question would be, then for these schools, um, such as Alondra, Jackson, Zamboni Middle School, then uh, the program is gonna be done during lunch and it says after school. So if they're not, if the students that we're targeting are the, uh, the ones that have chronic you know, absences, if they're not in the program after school, so how would they benefit them? If they're not at school, how would then would they benefit from this program going during lunch? Because it is during lunch. And so then I know as a, you know, looking at what I do um, as an educator, I know that during lunch, you know, you tell kids, come on over, I could help you. But realistically, by the time they eat, you're down to 10, 15 minutes. So I would want to see the data beforehand to be able to say uh, that we're, we're being responsible in what we're um, purchasing. And this doesn't come from just my mindset. It comes from um, the California School Boards Association when we went to the uh, San Francisco um, workshops. They said, make sure that you don't add and add and add because then you want to take some, you know, programs out, you're not going to know which ones to take out if you keep just adding. You want to be, you want to work smart. We want to be smart in what we do. Why? Because we know that Mr. Frutos, with his presentations, he tells us, look, bottom line is we're not getting, enrollment is not climbing up. It's not. Now, if there was another presentation where it says, okay, let's cut from the top, and then I go, oh, yeah, we've saved this much, then by all means, like, we should move forward. But it should be standard that we look at data beforehand and go, are we making the best? Are we doing these students that we're targeting the best for them, even though it's, what's $52,000 for 10 weeks? And that's my, that's my like, hard question. I also, you know. I also have another question. I see that on here it says, according to the data taken from student surveys, 61% of the students who participated in sports stated they learned more about math and science. What did the other 39% say? I mean, what did, they, what did they not like about the program or not learned about the program? Because this is a brand new program. Or, can, or I would like to go back and, and have, have um, data from these other schools that you mentioned and see what their their students say in comparison. So let me uh, let me because I sure, it was a sure, lot. Sure. Sorry. <laughs> so first of all, let me just clarify that um, uh, board member De Leon that uh, this is not a PE program, and I know you mentioned PE in the minutes. So 
And you did mention that this is a lunch program and an after school program. So that is definitely a difference. As far as data, I have a little bit of information from the company. Uh, and I have a few scenarios from some of the some of the schools. So I can I can't project it. I can send it to you. But uh, the infographic that you saw probably on the website was there. And uh, let's see. there was a decline in discipline. And that's when I talked to the representative today that that's uh, the discipline and the chronic absenteeism is really something that they look at. Um, let me pull up this, this uh, more anecdotal. So from one of the schools, and I cannot tell which school this is, but uh, they did look deeper at some data and they were looking at absences. And so total students with five or more, five absences before the program were at 48 and the total students uh, with more than five absences after the program had dropped to 30 and they calculated that at a 37.5% um, improvement. And then they also looked at office referrals and this was over uh, from October 28th through January 24th. So just a couple of months and you have to factor in uh, winter break. And then uh, similarly, they found a decrease in office referrals and uh, this particular school had eight in uh, before the program started and then four after the program. And then they have another uh, example. So another school, this was Dolores Huerta School. I'm, oh, this is in Fontana, it looks like. So they looked at, um, looks like attendance, and they noted a 3.9% increase in attendance uh, after they implemented the program, and a decrease in tardies uh, of, uh, from 19 tardies, group average, this was an average, to a group average of two. So uh, that was some of the data that he shared with me as far as uh, I, I understand your concern that if a student isn't there, then how is it that we're increasing uh, attendance? And when the representative came to talk to principals, he explained that they make those connections. And we all know that school connectedness helps students uh, uh, to want to attend school. So he, they deal a lot, do a lot with that, with the students wanting to be there to participate. And so they are motivated to attend to be part of this program. So I, did I address all of your questions? Um, yes, yes, I just have, um, I know it says for each uh, school there's a, um, an agreement. And then I'm looking at number of coaches and it says two coaches, the times vary. It could be from 1059 to 1228 um, at various schools. So what, what you're basically saying then is that within these time frames, um, students that are absent are going to be pulled to be in this program? No, they're not being pulled from class. It's so then during, how will we know? It's during breaks, it's during recess or lunchtime, so so it's after school. So are they going to be required to go or they're going to be offered like, well, if you like to go, it's there. How do, how do we justify spending this money and not, you know, I, I just have to think there's other students here and they need help with math. And I know that because through the LCAP, they've stated in their little notes that they write and they, they stated that they also would like help in reading. So, I, and I understand, like I said, I'm not against sports. Sports are great. It, it builds um, it builds collaborative um, communication amongst children, and um, being part of a group really helps students' self-esteem. So I understand that part. But I just want to understand, like, 
how is it that because we shouldn't just be here just to be approving and approving without going okay well how we we're, we we have to be held accountable at least i have to be held accountable and i have to be like i have that fire under me and going okay why are you approving this I, I love it. If we could get everything in the world and spend thousands and millions and billions of dollars like the president spends on wars, I would do that for our kids. I would have the room full of pictures, but I'm just not seeing how we're going to target. And that, if you could answer that question. So from my understanding, the, uh, the, the people who come, the, the consultants, the coaches, the, 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 the students that come, will be in, uh, invited. So the students, all students will be allowed to participate, but the schools will identify students that they will personally invite and bring and, um, you know, for this. So just like a lot of things, for example, with AVID, we, we look at students that we see as needing and we, we work with the students individually and we invite them into uh, to participate, to apply for uh, the program. Um, Femineers, same thing. We, we look at students that we feel would benefit, and so we invite them in. We won't be excluding students. However, we will definitely be looking at students based on uh, attendance, and I'm, I'm guessing suspensions as well, and then we will be inviting them, um, you know, through the uh, teachers, through the principals, assistant principals, you know, whoever has that connection. Do we, do we have any idea how many students um, will join this? I do not. Okay. Did anybody visit uh, Downey or Fontana schools to talk with the, the staff over there or have reach out to them in any way? So the process that occurred was that uh, the organization was invited to meet with the principals, principals. at the principal meeting, at mm -hmm. one of our principal meetings. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, then the principals met one-on-one -on -one with the individual, with um, uh, Shane. Uh -huh. And so that's so you mm -hmm. don't know if they did any visitations or talked with the principal of the other schools. That's correct. I think because there are so many questions, I'm going to make a suggestion. Could we bring this back next month and let the board do their own um, observation, like maybe go to Downey and look at the program or talk with the coaches or talk with the principals or mm -hmm. whatever? Yeah. Uh, well, is it too late yeah. to, to do that? I, I mean, it's, I mean it's, your, it's your call. Um, and uh, I will let uh, Shane know. I do know that he had planned to begin next week. I see, yeah. But, um, I mean, that's entirely up to you. Since it's only a... Then we're moving further and further into the school year, so um, I, I don't know. What's your pleasure? I would, I would, do you want to go ahead, or I, do you want to... I would like your suggestion of... Because of, I would take a day off from work. That's how interested I am to go talk to, you know, Downey and the other unified school districts. Anybody else feel that way? And we can ask them to bring it back next month and the board can do their own research? I think it's a great suggestion, um, President Hansen. Okay. That way then. we can see what's the ratio, how many kids um, they're working with, and... And do they have a limit on how many they'll take? I don't believe so, but I, I, I'm not 100% sure. Like I said, there was a presentation at a principal's meeting and principals met individually with, this, with mm -hmm. Shane. And so I was not present at those meetings. I gathered the contract mm -hmm. and uh, okay. did the research with. I believe the yes. I believe it was customized for each school. Yes. That's why every each school has a, a different plan. Right. But we can send the board the names of uh, schools that have had the program in place for a while. That in in enough time that they have collected data similar to the ones that are on the website with that data to verify and mm -hmm. and you can and, and visit. So I will reach out to Shane tomorrow morning mm -hmm. and uh, let him know that you're interested and I will get that information to, to We'll provide it in the Wednesday report for all the board members to see. <coughs> okay, so Absolutely. we have a motion and a, and a second on the floor and so we need to uh, amend that motion to um, Bring this back next month. Mm -hmm. How do you? What's the wording you need me to say? Well, if in no. within a, um, we will bring it back next month for a consideration again. For consideration mm -hmm. again. In the meantime, the board will do some more research on their own. 
Okay, yes. Okay, so um, who, moved, who made the motion? Who made I did, I believe. Will, is it all right to amend it? To, that, yes. Okay. Yes. So the motion is amended that this will be pulled from this agenda, be brought back next month after the board does some uh, research. Who made the second? I did. Is um, it okay with you? Yes. Amend yeah. that? Okay. Um, it, then we have a motion and a second uh, with an amendment to bring this back next, next month after the board <coughs> does their research. Um, any other questions? If not, it's time to vote. Um, yes. We don't need to, to vote. It's, we don't need to just, vote? No, no. You guys aren't acting on it. I'm sorry? You're not we're acting on it. So you're we're not, not acting. On what's we're just, okay, so it's just presented. pulled from the yes. agenda. Okay. Mm -hmm. You let me go through all the amending I'm and sorry. what you need to do. <laughs> I need the wording. I do need the wording. For okay, the thank you. <laughs> okay, moving on to the next thing. 7.10, uh, attorney fees and settlement agreement for a student with an individual individualized education program. Um, I'll take a motion. I'll um, make a motion. I'll second. It's been moved and seconded. Are there any questions or comments? If not, it's time to vote. All votes are in. Closing the vote, and it's a 5 0 vote. Motion carried 5 0. 7.11, Dr. Marlene Barbie. I'll take a motion, please. I'll make a motion to approve 7.11. A second? I'll second. Are there any questions or comments? Please vote. Okay, all votes are in. We're closing the vote. It's a 5 0 vote. Okay, motion was approved 5 0. 7.12, um, attorney fees and settlement agreement for a student with an individualized education program. I'll take a motion. I'll make a motion to approve 7.12. A second, please. I'll second. Are there any questions or comments? I just have a, uh, a comment um, because the previous were pretty much the same. I'm looking at like the financial impact of 14200 uh, for attorney fees but does it say like um like in what area did um like why are we being um sued that way we know okay we're being sued for x y and z we need to let's improve x y and z so it doesn't stipulate that can you provide a little more information maybe in wednesday notes is it would that make sense or is it something someone can answer now? I don't know. Since we don't have the we don't have the paperwork and stuff in front of us, does somebody remember? Because I know we have to pay. I mean, thank you. Thank you. All right. Good evening. Um, the question is um, for the the fiscal impact. That is actually the attorney fees, the amount for the attorney fees to settle the case. Correct. But my question would be then um, as a board member, I would believe that we want to know like, okay, why are these fees being um, given? Like, what did, what did the parents sue us for? Like, it was it, we didn't have the proper service provided? Was it a lack of speech support? Was it lack of, I don't know, X, Y, and Z, but that's why we, I'm thinking we need to know, at least I, I would want to know, so then we know, oh, we know that this area of special education we need to focus on because we need to provide services or how do we we um, make sure you support you know our teachers to support then our students. Right. So part of the settlement agreement is a confidential document, um, the information that is listed in there. Some school um, districts they bring this to their closed session so that they can get more background information on the cases. But it is part of the due process. So um, basically when a family finds an attorney to file on the district, then we have to go through that process. And I'm not by any means do I want like information of whether was it a female student, what student, but is it like just basic generic information like, oh, we were sued because a uh, parent wanted 
services for speech or we didn't give speech? Um, it's pretty complicated each case. Um, I'm not sure how you would want that information because it is confidential as part of the settlement agreement. So, so we then have, we have to state the case number too. I mean, that has to be public. Yeah. So to put any other information there, so maybe it's something we need to consider of this may be something that we want to look at in close set mm -hmm. in the future, possibly. Mm -hmm. Just just so as a board, we, we're we not just approving and approving because, of course, if we, the district mm -hmm. gets sued, we have, to, we have to pay their funds, but we have to also acknowledge what's not working. Where, where can we help students? Where can we help the teachers? Where is the root of the problem? Um, because if if we could if we keep spending this amount, I mean, we might as well put it in to begin with. I would I would I would agree and say that just as we receive confidential material at home in a confidential envelope, if we can, if we as the board can have that in confidential, we don't need as as board member De Leon says we don't need the student's name. We have the number, mm -hmm. but we just want to track. What are we lacking? Because if we do lack in an area and we just keep on spending and spending and spending, I mean, it's no use for us to board just to rubber stamp. We're not here to rubber stamp. We we, we would like at least I and I'm I'm, I'm assuming the board because it's a we that we would want to know where 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 our funds are going. And if we can correct the issue, why not? So maybe um, superintendent, uh, would you kind of think this through and figure out? What would be the best way to handle this? I, I've actually talked to an attorney, um, a special ed attorney about this because it was something that I was exploring and Dr. Garcia and I have talked about it in terms of, you know, how much information we can provide the Board of Education prior to their voting on attorney settlements. Uh, my recommendation actually is that we bring a special ed attorney to speak to the board in closed session about how much can be revealed without mm -hmm. the board um, violating any privacy laws or issues, and then uh, take our um, take our next steps based on that discussion with the special ed attorney in closed session. Because it is very it is complicated. It is different mm -hmm. from other um, other issues where we are paying attorneys fees because they do involve uh, a student, and there are very strong uh, privacy laws related to to that i i i, I totally and understand. i hear what you're saying okay. but i'm just saying for yes. the board's protection yes. i would say Absolutely. let's bring in a special ed right. attorney to talk about that right I'm, I'm, and what i'm just trying to say is for is for the record we're not saying we don't want to pay the attorney oh, yes we're yes. just trying Absolutely. to find out what's the root cause of having yes. an attorney and i will share with you that every case as dr mm -hmm. garcia has shared is different yeah. mm -hmm. and I yes and, and I agree mm -hmm. but if we could yes. just find out just the problem. we'd be happy to do that but just know that they 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 really vary yeah. because mm -hmm. every child is different Absolutely. obviously okay. and their needs mm -hmm. are different then could you set something up so um, that we could have an yes. attorney come in and speak to us yes very good thank you okay are we uh, ready to vote please do on 7.2 I'm sorry 7.12 Okay, all votes are in. Closing the vote. It's a 5 0 vote. Motion carried 5 0. 7.13 non public school placement for a student with an individualized education program 2019 20. I'll take a motion. A motion. A second, please. I'll second. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, please vote. Okay, all votes are in. I'll be closing the vote. It's a 5 0 vote. Motion carried 5 0. Uh, 7.14 Kaiser Permanente's Hippocratic Circle Program MOU. I'll make a motion to approve 7.14. I'll need a second, please. I'll second. I do, I do have a question, um, and that is um, I believe I, this is an awesome program. I just have a question so that our um, community knows, because I know that's questions I would probably be asked, because I do have um, neighbors that do go to these schools. And one is, what is the process for selecting students in the program? 
and what de what determines their interest and eligibility for the program? Sure. In the interest of time, I'll share uh, the information that we were able to uh, provide for you, board members. The medical detectives is one of the electives uh, in the middle schools that offers uh, as part of this engineering pathway. Uh, this course focuses on how doctors collect and analyze data to understand diseases. Students at Alondra, because this is specifically for Alondra, who are enrolled in the medical detectives were invited to participate in the Hippocrates Circle as this program introduces students to careers in medicine. Students and their parents were uh, attended an informational orientation meeting to confirm their interest. Thank you. And they have another, uh, there is another meeting. I have it on my calendar. Um, if somebody could um, check with Alondra and share that with the rest of the board because they will have another couple of meetings with the parents and the students. And one is coming up this month, so we, um, you can go. I'm actually I'm going to go, so I can find out a little bit more about the program. Mm -hmm. But uh, if anybody else is interested, that'll be we great to know. The Sounds like a good. We'll, opportunity. we'll provide that in a Wednesday report. That would be great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? This is our third year of this program. I can't remember just, how many years have we been doing this. Just a quick question: If the meeting is tomorrow, because tomorrow is Wednesday, right? Um, can I know in the morning that way I could try to get off work early? Thank you. Is it tomorrow? Is no, I'm saying if it is tomorrow because February 19th. February 19th. February 19th. Yeah, I knew it was coming up. Okay, thank you. You know the time, by the way? Uh, in the evening. It's in the yeah, it's evening. I'll, I'll send this whole. Okay, thank you. Okay, great. Yeah, I Appreciate picked that up at a longer school when I was over visiting. And okay. Very good. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, time to vote. Kale votes are in. They're closing the vote, and it's a 5 0 vote. Motion carried 5 0. 7.15. Who knew it? Who knew it? Who knew it? Who knew it? Agreement. Who knew it? Who knew it? Agreement. Okay. Are there any questions or comments on this? We need to make a motion. Motion. Oh, we need a motion. Thank you. Make a motion to approve 7.15. I have a second, please. I'll second. Okay, any questions or comments? Again, just for transparency for the community, um, what is the cost savings for, for changing the program? Do you have that handy, Dr. Smith? If not, I can read it. Sure, Go maybe ahead. we can work mm -hmm. together on that part if there's a detail mm -hmm. on this. Um, it's approximately $15,000 at the moment. However, that's a number that would likely be higher. Had we remained in a partnership with Schoolzilla, they've been increasing their prices substantially each year. So at this moment, looking at what we're locked, we, we, this proposal would lock us into price-wise compared to Schoolzilla's current pricing. It's a difference of about 15000 So over the course of three years, minimum, it would be a savings of about $45,000, although it would likely be more than that because of how Schoolzilla has priced their product. Thank you. So do we know the actual cost? Yes, we do. Um, so when you look at the specific cost of the software, um, and I'll pull it up real, real fast. Uh, it's $73,000, I believe, per year. So that'll be our, our cost of actually, or 75, I'm sorry. Uh, that'll be our actual cost of using the software, whereas Schoolzilla is actually closer to 90. There is a component of money that is for implementing the software up front. So there's a cost associated with training folks with um, their data team, working with our data team to connect um, our SIS to their product and doing the customizations that we're requesting that they do for us. Because I know it says uh, the impact would be not to exceed 270000 correct, from LCAP. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, I know there was a time when I asked uh, Mr. Frutos um, when we spent money for the fixing of the transition right here on Orizaba, and uh, it was about 60,000, not to exceed 60,000. Um, Mr. Frutos, I mentioned that we, the district has to bid at, once it's 50,000, is that correct? It depends on the type of work. So for any type of construction, modernization, any type of work like that, it's anything over $15,000 we have to bid. Over 15,000. Oh, for yeah. construction. 15. That's okay. why that, that work earlier on today. Because I know you but, had said that we didn't bid that one. But when we procure, mm -hmm. and, and if you remember, just to clarify, 
the reason why we didn't bid it, it, it wasn't our work. The work belonged to the city. So remember, you don't bid what's not yours. That work was the city's, so we paid the city to do the work that's different. Through the bond measure money? Through, through, the, through the district funds, but it wasn't our bid. In this case, it depends on what type of procurement this would be. It's not, from what I understand, it's not a construction project. No. So it would be, it would be depending on the So then for that. these, uh, it's a service, correct? It's a service. It's a data service that helps like Synergy and whatnot. So. It's uh, actually it, a software. So, so it's software. more software than so service. Y correct. But there's always someone that could help you with the, with the software or data that collects the data or whatnot, or whatever you use it for district tests or whatnot. So whenever we're purchasing, um, you know, and we're changing now this data or their software, um, do we bid on that too? Or do we just decide, oh, we could, because I know we're saving money, which is great. Is that the, is that the procedure to go? You bid and then you just decide which one offers more for your money or uh, how do we, how, how does the process work? So I'm guessing that Mr. Frutos and I can answer this question together. I'll start with my end of it. Um, as we detailed in what we provided the board as far as information, we went out and looked at various products that operate in this space. And so we have several unique needs that we have to ensure that a vendor can meet. We have a student information system, for example, Synergy, that mm -hmm. is particular when it comes to who, quote unquote, plays with it. In other words, who can connect to it easily. We've also adopted a number of other products, such as Schoology, um, which is our learning management system, such as Illuminate Education, which is our data management system. And we have to look at who has the best interoperability with that those particular products. We also have some work that we've done with our data dashboard as it exists now that it is really important to us that we're able to customize our product, this product, to be able to, in the best possible way, highlight and illustrate the data, various data points that are related to either our LCAP or our strategic plan or board specific goals or other initiatives in a way that's really useful for all of our user groups to be able to see. So for example, not all data dashboards are customizable in a way that a group of parents can see a specific dashboard with metrics that have been identified, teachers, staff, counselors, administrators, even board members. Who knew it of all the products was the best product that we found that allowed us to do that. So that's why we selected that particular piece. Mr. Frutos might want to speak to any specifics about what we're obligated to do in terms of um, in terms of bidding. I don't know if that applies mm -hmm. to this since it's a specific product, but I don't know if there's anything you want to jump in on. Happy to mention it because we've been looking at it for some of the other procurement. You, we actually fall under public contract code 20118.3 because we will refer to that in the future if somebody wants to write it. And education code A1651. And I quote, uh, the district may waive the requirements for bidding only for supplementary textbooks, library books, educational films, test materials, educational test, instructional computer software packages, and periodicals. That's your only waiver. Mm -hmm. So if I buy switches, routers, and hubs, I have to get a quote if they bring you an instructional software package, public contract code 20118, and ad code 81651 allows for a waiver if the board approves it. Remember, you still need to approve it. Okay, any other questions? Okay, hearing none, it's time to vote. Okay, all the votes are in. I'll be closing the vote, and it's a 5 0 vote. Motion carried 5 0. 7.16 Memorandum of Understanding with Hogue Charity Sports. I'll make a motion to approve 7.16. I'll take a second. Close second. Okay, any questions or comments? Do they need chaperone? <laughs> 
asked that question last year. I guess not. I'm sure that we can arrange that if you'd like to go. That wouldn't be a problem. This is awesome. We saw the film last year of what these kids produced. That's incredible. It was. Very good. Okay, any other, uh, any questions or comments? It's time to vote. Okay, all votes are in. I'll be closing the vote, and it's with the 5 zero vote. Motion carried, 5-0. 7.17 Career Technical Education Advisory Committee. Make a motion, please. A motion to approve. A second. I'll second. Any questions or comments? When is uh, when is the next meeting? Dr. Francois, do you do you remember? May seventh. May seventh. I'm sorry. May seventh. May seventh. Thank you. And that is during. Yes, it's during the day. And it's usually over at West Campus? This one will be at uh, Senior Campus. At Senior Campus. Can you send the board a little more information in case they're able to make the meeting? It's very interesting to meet with the folks that are advising us. Okay, any questions? Time to vote. All votes are in. I'll be closing the vote with the 5 0 vote. Motion carried 5 0. 7.18 improvements at Zamboni Middle School. And motion to approve. Thank you. And a second, please. I'll second. Okay, are there any questions or comments? Hearing none, it's time to vote. All votes are in. I'll be closing the vote with the 5 0 vote. Motion carried 5 0. 7.19 2019 20 budget adjustments as of December 31st, 2019. Take a motion, please. I'll move. And a second? I'll second. Are there any questions? Comments? Hearing none, it's time to vote. Okay, all votes are in. I'll be closing the vote with the 5 0 vote. Motion carried 5 0. 7.20, notice of completion. Take a motion, please. I'll motion to approve. And a second? I'll second. I have a motion and a second. Are there any questions or comments? I have a comment. Um, I know it says here um, that the vendor is South Bay Heating and Air Conditioning and they're replacing the HVAC systems. That's 25, correct? Yes, it says 25. Okay. So in what locations, though? We can get that information provided to the board easily. Now, would they be the same HVAC that that um, we're bidding for? Go ahead. Those units that are being replaced with Mokler. I'm, I'm sorry. Much better. There you How's go. That? <laughs> um, the units that are listed there are spread out between Mokler and Work. So those two schools got some new AC. Because the the other ones were old and they're more yeah, than so we're more, buying, more than twenty pushing. years old, and so mm -hmm. we're trying very hard to replace them as they pass their life expectancy of about twenty years. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Hearing none, it's time to vote. All votes are in. I'll be closing the vote with the five zero vote. Motion carried, 5 0. 7.21, 2020 21 school breakfast program and summer meal program startup expansion grant. Take a motion, please. I'll move. I'll second. Any questions or comments? <coughs> Hearing none, it's time to vote. Okay, all votes are in. I'll be closing the vote with the 5 0 vote. Okay, motion carried 
We're into um, information items. 8.1, Dr. Perez. Yes, board members, uh, in uh, item 8.1i, uh, the information provided for you is the average daily attendance, which increased by 38 from the projected P2ADA report for the third month of 2019-20, the school year. The actual enrollment as of the third month decreased by 331 students compared to last year at this time. The rate of attendance is 96% compared to last year, which was 97%. For special education, the actual average daily attendance decreased by 32 from projected P2 ADA for the third month of 2019-20. The actual enrollment as of the third month decreased by 164 students compared to the previous year, 2018 to 2019. Information item 8.2i, the average daily attendance increased by 201 from projected P2 ADA report for the fourth month of 2019 through 2020. The actual enrollment as of the fourth month decreased by 331 students compared to last year. The rate of attendance is 96% compared to last year, which was 97%. For special education, the actual ADA decreased by 41 from projected P2 ADA report for the fourth month of this school year. The actual enrollment as of the fourth month decreased by 164 students compared to the previous year of 2018 to 19. Information item 8.3i are the monthly financial statements for the month of December. The revenues received that are in excess of $100,000 are listed for you, followed by the financial statements for each fund. Information item 8.4i are the monthly financial statements for special education for the month of December. Revenues received in excess of $100,000 are listed for you, followed by the financial statement. And finally, information item 8.5i our monthly financial statements for the self-insurance fund for the month of December. Contributions for the month of December are listed for you, followed by the financial statement. That concludes information items. Okay, thank you very much. Um, okay, communications and discussion. Um, 9.1 Assembly Bill 272, student smartphone uh, use. And I think that this is something yes, that you brought, I brought forward. Up. You wanted to have a conversation. Sure. Yes, I do. Um, AB, uh, AB 272 smartphones um, authorizes a school board to make a policy to either limit or, um, or I uh, forgot the word, the, pro the proper word, but um, not take away, but to and not have um, students have their cell phones during um, school hours, with the exception, of course, emergencies like the IEPs, the students who need them. Mm -hmm. um, when I went to Odyssey, I was very surprised um, when I was talking to um, Professor Nut Nuthall that his school does not have cell phones. When they walk into his class, he makes them put them in, in their backpack. Now, mm -hmm. I've, done, I've done my research and I've asked uh, uh, Dr. Perez to provide research, but my research was that um, in Escondido, in, in San Diego, they have these pouches that they hang on the front of, of, of the door when they come in on the wall. And the student, as soon as they get in, they, they, they just hang their cell phone there. It's not locked up. It's just hung there. That way, in a case of an emergency, they can run and grab their phone. The other research that I did was in San Mateo up north where they do put it in a pouch under lock, um, under lock so no um, student can use them during um, school hours. Um, I would recommend that our board does make a policy, but at least a pilot program for one of the one of the um, grade levels, um, and that is so that they do not have their cell phones in class. They can use their cell phones in between classes because that's their freedom, but in class they really should not be using them because statistically it's it's showing 
that the kid will improve, or the, or the student, sorry, the student will improve in his schoolwork if they do not have the cell phone, because the cell phone is a very big, big, big distraction. It's almost like at work. A lot of employers do not let you use your cell phone. You know, I mean, you're not allowed to use it, whether you like it or not. I mean, if they find you, you could be fired for it, or you can, for, of course, a warning and then fired. But what do we as a district do to help our students get ahead? We want, we, we, I'm all for graduation rates, um, uh, raising the bar in math, in English, and these cell phones just seem like they're just not helping. So uh, under, under this assembly bill that even the assembly passed, gave us the authorization to start something. So I would at least ask for a pilot program meanwhile, but I don't know which, what, I mean, this is a discussion, so I need to hear both sides. I mean, what's the, contra, you know, what's the, what's the pros and cons? The pros is, I'm, I believe that the scores will be higher. The cons are, yes, we're gonna have parents upset, but what did all these other school districts do when they, when they took away phones? Yeah, I, I, I started talking with um, people at different schools once you brought this up. And it looks like there are different um, procedures throughout different schools. Like at a laundry school, no phone. Those kids mm -hmm. are not allowed to have phones out any time during the day, including lunch. Mm -hmm. But other schools, like the high school I was learning, they're allowed to use them at lunch. Um, so there's a, there, I mean, it is something that we need to look at, find out what the other schools are doing. I'm not, I, I'm very much in favor of a, of a, um, a policy. And it may be that CSBA has something for us that we can build on. Um, we can check with them yeah. and see. And in the meantime, we need to kind of find out what the other schools are doing. You know, let's see. Within our district. And what's working and what isn't. Absolutely. I mean, yeah. I would love the research if, if Dr. Perez can give us the research on the different schools of what they're doing for among them. Yeah, that would because, be great. Because just like and Dr. Perez has mentioned in the past, when the high school fights, just like today, it's on social media. These kids have it on, on the phone. Yeah. I mean, I was told that the, that the fight started since last Thursday, and we didn't hear about it. And then it, they didn't, the way this, the, apparently what was told to me, I was not there. The way this, the, the, our, our school district handled it was incorrect. So it festered till Friday, Monday was a holiday. And then all of a sudden again today. So in social media, that's where they get it. They get their cell phones, they put it up on social media and it I gets know. worse. And then parents get all, you know, yes. riled up. And it, sometimes yes. it's just, it's something the administration needs to deal with. Mm -hmm. And it's dealt with, and the kids are dealt with, and, and, and then, you know, it's just out there, and it makes us look like... Oh, I mean, like to look, <laughs> I got phone calls right away. I mean, it's job. like, really? I you mean... Know, it's terrible. Absolutely. So my question would be, what policy or rules uh, given by the district, because depending on the district, they have policies that they pass, and they say, okay, no phones at all, um, or whatnot. What do we have for high school? What do we have right now? Are they allowed to use phones, or are they not allowed to use phones? I believe that they're allowed to use phones on at break. lunch. I think on, at break and, and lunch. Break. That's what I've heard, in between passing. But in the classroom, mm -hmm. they're not permitted to have them out. And then that, that's the second piece. Then it becomes, okay, well, does a teacher follow through? Or, she, or they do follow through, but then is administration helping them follow through? Uh, because sometimes you have to deal with, and uh, trust me, I, I've dealt with it where it's like uh, you're, you know, where there's a school district where you, the parent has to sign that they're not going to, the child is not going to use a cell phone during school hours, only between uh, lunch hours uh, or not even passing period. It's just during lunch and that's it. And so in any time the student is using the cell phone in the classroom, the teacher can confiscate it. So we are given the right to confiscate it. Okay, so then the next step I've had where parents are like, well, you took my ch child's phone and I was on the phone with them. And it's like, oh my gosh, but they already signed this documentation. But the good thing that I felt at the time was that my principal was backing me up. So then it became where the parent was now frustrated that they had to pick up the phone, but that's what they signed, that's what they agreed. And then, then eventually it was like there was no problem with the cell phone. But we have to um, be able to have, I believe, administration back up our teachers. 
um, and not give up on the students that, oh, you know what, so-and-so, they always have it, you know, we just, just let them, just, and sometimes some teachers are like, you know what, it's either I battle with the same student on and on and on, or I teach this class, and that's frustrating for them. So, you know, it just depends on what policies and who's going to really implement these policies. And, you know, I think that's something that um, Dr. Perez can do a little research on and come back with us, come back to us with some recommendations so if, that we can... If the board sets a policy district-wide that students are not to use cell phones during class time and a teacher takes away a phone from a student um, and a parent gets upset, the administration just has to tell the parent, this is board policy. This is board policy. You know... Right now, we don't have a board policy. Right. It's a protocol. Mm -hmm. So it's very, it's very different, and it varies from school to school, because mm -hmm. we do have some classrooms where the cell phones are being used for instructional re uh, purposes, mm -hmm. believe it or not. So we need to, I would recommend that I gather data for mm -hmm. you on each school's protocol for dealing with cell phones. Uh, we do have, in our technology policy, uh, uh, information about how how cell phones should or could be used as well that we can pull for you and share with you about that. And then I would recommend that uh, having looked at that information in a Wednesday report that we bring this back for discussion and then you can, after seeing the whole picture of how it is being used, uh, the board can decide on a policy which I can bring proposal language and then the board can select a school to pilot this at. And do you want to do it at a middle school? Do you want to do it at a high school? Do you want to do it just at the ninth grade center? Those are questions that you right. can start thinking about at this time. Or we could probably pilot one class in each in each grade level. I mean, each middle school, one in middle school, and one in high school. I would school. recommend school-wide if you're going to do a, okay. a policy, because okay. that causes confusion sometimes. Okay. Um, and also, the price of the pouches, we can bring that to you as well. Mm -hmm. I, I know personally the parents are going to be like mm -hmm. infuriated if we do pouches. Um, and to a certain extent, I understand them because to a certain extent, we have to give our students responsibility. And we have to educate our students to know that whatever they put in social media, um, it'll haunt them back when they get a job. Like, you know, even now teachers are putting stuff on social media that's not appropriate. If we were to dismiss these teachers, it would be very hard for them to get a job. And so that's something that it has to be educated that you're given this responsibility. And if you do not follow this, then this is the consequences. Um, I think it's a great idea if we start middle school and then we um, those middle school students are going to be like familiar. It's kind of like when we had uh, just um, dress you know, they had to wear um, uniforms in elementary, and then it just became a middle school where I was like, oh, thank you, Jesus, because then it's so easier for Christina get to get dressed. Mm -hmm. Now, if they put it in high school, that would even be better, and she wouldn't, you know, the students wouldn't be able to go, oh, my gosh, because they're already used to it. So if we implement it, I, this is my idea of middle school and then going on as they go on, they, they would be used to it. Yeah. I think you, you need to do some kind of data, too, on the safety of the pouches. Those phones are very expensive. Right. And how many have been taken by some, you know? Well, that's, that's, that's why um, uh, Dr. Nuthall said that he makes them put it in their backpack as soon as they come in because it's in their possession and nobody can take it away. But still, we need to make policy that they're not allowed to take it out at all during the class hours or even, you know, lunch or Okay, that's we'll get some more information okay. back, and then we can then, uh, make a decision. That would be great. And then can I bring up another subject, President Hansen? Mm -hmm. um, the, this, um, the agenda online is great, but are we doing anything for translating it in Spanish for our community? Because 80, 80, over 85% of our population is Hispanics, and I've already got phone calls saying, where is it? And I say, well, let me ask tonight, because I'm not even positive on that. It's, no, on, online. You know how before they were got me, they were able to go online and see it in, in Spanish at the at That's the last the two two board meetings that you translated in Spanish. Um, it wasn't on I think it was. I think the last one was. Yeah, it was. This I think the agenda was on because I looked. 
We can post the Spanish version online. Yes, please. Because we yeah. will do that. I believe that. I thought it was there. I, I think I it was there too. Yes. Yeah. To, yeah. yeah, I thought I had yeah. directed yeah. to yeah. have it that once, below the English one. So yes. we will definitely do that. Too. It was once. Yeah. Yes. And the, and then one other uh, uh, question, uh, President Hansen, is that if we can uh, bring back next month AB AB five. Um, I know that legislation is changing it, but AB5 is about um, ind independent contractors and our, um, oh, actually my mind went blank right now. Um, Dr. Perez, can you help me out with AB5? What, what, what's um, the, um, the community schools initiative um, no. uh, bill that will come in November? No, no, no. AB, AB, AB5 is like for uh, Uber and... Um, like Uber drivers. Oh, well. yeah, for, but, yeah, but, but, but it, it all it was in The one that was in your Wednesday report right, that but, impacts consultants correct, that work for the right. district. But my, my, my question was in the, in the last meeting uh, was, what is, the board gonna, what is the board's plans on that for the AB5? Do we have employees that are, I mean, independent contractors that are doing... The business, I, I, I can't, I can't uh, paraphrase the the AB five, but it mm -hmm. seems like if we were to do that, we need to know what the the school board is going to be doing about AB five. Mm -hmm. Okay, can you do some research and let us know? Yeah, okay. we'll bring we'll bring that back. Did okay, you want to say something, Mr. Frutos? Because yeah, we did. Lake provided initial advice because, as you know, it came out from the Uber, Uber economy, Correct. whether they are actual employees or mm -hmm. contractors. There you go. So they're beginning to provide advice as to the number of activities that a person would need to do specifically to be considered an employee. Do we right. provide guidance? There's Is it three. independent? Mm -hmm. There's one primary criteria that everybody has agreed upon, and that is when we, when we the district, meaning you approve us to give guidance, and we tell somebody how to do the work, and we take him through a process as an employee, they're an employee, as opposed to we tell him this must be done, and then they do it, right. and we get an end result. They're not an employee. So LACO will provide a variety of criteria that eventually will make it to us and how we pay, and obviously to our folks in HR and how they hire. So if the board pleases, we will bring you the information yes, that we're you? getting, yes. uh, which is evolving as we speak. Absolutely, absolutely. Because I, I believe when I read it, there was three three criterias, and I believe that if if any one of those three criterias were, I believe, a no, then that means we're not following AB five, and I think we fall in that, and that's come. I'm questioning it, and it also had a little splurge about education, and we are in education. That's what caught my eye. So if we can just have that, yep. thank you. Okay. And if it is, what are the plans for Paramount? Do you want to bring it back as a discussion item? Is that what I'm hearing? Um, now that um, now that Board Hansen um, mentioned that if you can do the research and, and, and send it to us on the Wednesday report, that would be great. Yeah, and then okay. I don't know if we'll need to take action until right. we have a little more information. Right. I would also like to suggest to the board, since in uh, April we have a, a study session on proposed new initiatives mm -hmm. that we can... If the board, uh, if it pleases the board to wait until then, uh, because it doesn't sound like the cell phone policy is something that we would implement until the beginning the of, year. of next year, uh, because to implement something like that, the middle of a semester um, might be disruptive, but we can uh, discuss this at, um, with all of this information gathered as a proposed pilot initiative uh, at the April 28th study session. But if but if we were to, uh, it won't, when we discuss and if we come into agreement, it could take actually effect on the school uh, the school year, which is August, correct? Yes. Not 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 next year, meaning next. No no no. Beginning. August of you mean 2020. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, that's fine. Yes. yes, that's fine. Yes, that's fine. Because this way, all the information that would need to go home to parents and teachers right, right. and. It's better to start the school year right. that no, way. No, absolutely. Okay. I so agree. we will bring it during the study session. That's correct. Okay. But the AB5 will be in our Wednesday report, right? Yes. And if needed, uh, uh, President Hansen, we can discuss that in our next meeting, correct? AB5? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. That works. Okay. Got it. Okay, we're down to announcements. 10.1, um, next regular meeting will be held Monday, March 9th at 2, at, uh, here in the boardroom at 6 o'clock. We also have a special study session meeting on April 28th at 5.30 that will be added to our calendar. 
And um, the next item is 10.2 staff or employee comments per government code 54957. Anybody have anything? If not, we'll go into closed session. The time is 10.04. In closed session, we'll deal with conference with a labor negotiator per government code 54957.6 and 11.3 conference with labor, labor legal counsel anticipate a litigation per government code 54956.9 B and 11.4 public employee dismissal discipline or release per government code section 54957.6 we are uh, going to close session we will be back after close session thank you